There are 185 prisoners on death row in the state of Texas. Harvey Irvin, 65 years old, 46 years on death row. On December 7, 1976, just before dusk, Irvin and Felica Farrell, a 15-year-old companion, proceeded to the back of a gas station in Lufkin with the intention of robbing the attendant of the money he had earned over the day. Irvin was wearing an Afro-style wig and a mustache painted on his face with cosmetic makeup. He was armed with a 20-gauge shotgun with a single barrel. They saw Ertis Brock walking around his car that was parked nearby while holding a bank bag and some papers as they approached the gas station from the back. Farrell claims that as Brock reached into his back pocket, Irvin shot him in the chest. After leaving the crime scene, neither Irvin nor Farrell took the money, and Irvin later abandoned the gun some distance away from the murder scene. Within a few days, both suspects were found and each confessed to the crime specifics. The testimony of Farrell and Bill Mickens, who Irvin had plotted the heist with a few days prior, helped the state establish its case. From the Congo Club, Mickens took Farrell and Irvin to a location close to the gas station where Brock was killed. On the guilt-innocence phase of the trial, Irvin did not take the stand and did not provide any evidence in his own defense. Clarence Jordan, 67 years old, 45 years on death row. George Harden was the manager of the Rice Food Store in Houston on October 14, 1977. On that day, Clarence Jordan went into his office at the business, asked for a job application, then pulled a revolver from his shirt and put it between his eyes. Harden provided him with his car keys but informed him that his vehicle was in the shop in response to his request. Harden was then instructed by Clarence Jordan to stand up, come to the front, and give him the money. Joseph Williams, an employee, walked into the office and Jordan shoved Williams into Harden. Williams was instructed to sit down, get up, sit down, and then get up again. Jordan shot Williams in the right side of his chest after Williams claimed he didn't possess a car. Afterwards, Jordan gave Harden the go-ahead to get him the cash from the front. Johnny Taylor, a different employee, was encountered as he made his way to the front of the store. He was told to follow Harden to the front by Clarence Jordan, who then put the gun over his ear. Harden went to the curtsy booth where the cash was stored and instructed Geraldine James, the employee there, to hand the cash to Jordan. He instructed Harden to put the bundles of money he was receiving from the booth in a sack for him as they arrived. When Jordan set off running, Harden was able to hide behind the vending machine despite Jordan having promised to take him as hostage. He was standing there waving the gun and ordering the customers in the shop to all go to the rear of the business and not come back. Ike Warner testified that on October 14, 1977, he and Laura Frank were driving to a Neckard's drug store in the same shopping mall as the disputed rice food market. Warner was instructed to leave by a man known as Clarence Jordan who got into the vehicle while holding a gun. Warner was given directions by Jordan who told him to turn there and to turn here. Jordan was totting around the money bag. Warner was told to stop after 5 or 10 minutes of driving. Jordan then ordered Warner to take off and don't look back before exiting the vehicle. According to a testimony from the chief medical examiner, Williams, a 40-year-old man, died as a consequence of a chest wound from a .38 caliber gunshot. Arturo Aranda, 75 years old, 44 years on death row. Around midnight on July 31, 1976, Laredo police officer Candelario Vieira noticed a station wagon going toward the banks of the Rio Grande River with out-of-town license plates. As a seasoned drug officer who was familiar with the area, he knew the car was traveling toward the well-known drug crossing site. The station wagon arrived along the river. Two people came out and made their way to the water's edge. The two men got back in the car and drove it to the ocean after a short while. Vieira then observed the station wagon leave the river, noticing that it had ridden lower than when it had arrived. Also, he noticed numerous burlap bundles inside the station wagon that weren't there previously. Vieira followed the car while radioing for backup to do a pullover. Policeman Pablo Albidres stopped his patrol car in front of the station wagon at a city intersection and Vieira followed behind. 
Albidras was fatally injured in the ensuing gunfire. After being detained, Aranda was acknowledged in court as having fired the fatal shot. Willie Washington, 64 years old, 37 years on death row. When two employees were killed during a robbery at a grocery shop, Washington was found guilty and given the death penalty by the state of Texas. He visited the grocery shop where he was given cash and food stamps before getting a gun and shooting two employees who later died as a result of their wounds according to court filings. When the Harris County guy was detained in 1985, he was on parole. According to Texas Department of Criminal Justice Records, Washington was 36 years old and he was apprehended after returning to the site with the stolen money still in his pocket. Nelson Mooney, 68 years old, 36 years on death row. Mooney, then 38 years old, was given a death by lethal injection sentence for the killing and robbery of Raymond Garner, 63 years old, on August 18, 1984. Garner, a worker for Houston-based Bilbo Freight Lines, was discovered dead in the water near Dayton Lakes Estates. A tire-attached blanket was placed over his torso. After attempting to rob a convenience store, Mooney and co-defendant Ross Wayne Nix were apprehended in Grand Junction, Colorado. They were driving Garner's van, which had been given a fresh coat of paint and received new license plates. According to Nix, they kidnapped Garner, took him to a remote area, and then stole the $100 to $150 in cash that he was carrying. Nix claimed that he was not there when Garner was killed. Nix received a life in prison sentence. Emmanuel Kemp, 58 years old, 35 years on death row. One night in May 1987, a Fort Worth bus driver was forced to drive to Trinity Park by a 20-year-old ex-con with a history of armed robberies. The sole other passenger, Johnny Gray, a 34-year-old emergency department clerk at John Peter Smith Hospital in Fort Worth, was essayed and stabbed to death there by Emmanuel Kemp. He also stabbed the young driver, David Ginfro, in the neck, but he managed to run and he survived. Kemp served roughly four years in jail for three violent robberies, including a holdup at Fort Worth liquor shop in which he stabbed the clerk. He was out on parole two weeks before the bus murder. Even if before his trial he was considered competent and without any mental illness, Years later, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and currently there are debates on the morality of executing an inmate in his condition. Among other things, Kemp believes he is God and he created himself. He thinks and he claims he died six times before and was resurrected. And he also thinks the lethal injection will not kill him, but it could spoil him. Sied Rabani, 58 years old, 35 years on death row. Mohammed Jakir Hassan was a clerk at a quick and easy gas station. According to testimony, the victim worked hard, he was modest, and he saved money in an effort to one day own a convenience shop. Hassan, who frequently stayed at Sajedul Shaudhuri apartment because of its close proximity to the convenience store, intended to work at a quick and easy until it closed on October 31, 1987, and then spent the night there. According to Shaudhuri testimony, Hassan didn't visit his house that evening. After making multiple queries regarding Hassan's whereabouts, Shaudhuri took a taxi to the convenience store the following morning at 7 a.m. on November 1st. When Shaudhuri arrived at the shop, Hassan's car was in the parking lot, the doors were closed, and the lights were on. When Shaudhuri and the cab driver entered the shop, they discovered a gun, a Colt 38 special revolver, lying inside the open safe under the counter, along with a few coins. The body of Hassan was found on the bedroom floor at the back of the store, lying in the fetal position in a pool of blood by the cab driver. Hassan died from three close-range bullet wounds, the medical examiner stated, two to the head, which were through and through, and one to the chest. Siad Rabani was identified as the murderer. He knew Hassan was saving money to purchase his own store. Warren Rivers, 56 years old, 35 years on death row. Rivers was found guilty of killing 11-year-old Carl Nance Jr. in May 1987. The boy had ridden his bicycle to a nearby shop to run an errand for his mother, according to testimony from the 1988 trial. The youngster was taken into an abandoned house south of the city on May 3, 1987, 
where he was then beaten, essayed, and stabbed according to the evidence. Days after being detained, Rivers eventually told homicide detectives that he had slain the youngster. In addition to the evidence presented in the initial trial, the prosecution demonstrated that he had written stories in journals while incarcerated about essay, murder, and sadism. Rivers had previously served time for a different essay while still a minor. Mark Robertson, 55 years old, 32 years on death row. Robertson was originally given the death penalty for the 1989 slayings of his friend and his 81-year-old grandmother. Robertson visited his friend's house to get high and do some crank. Later that evening, the 21-year-old and his friend, Sean Hill, went fishing in the creek behind the house. Before shooting his friend in the head, they had caught seven catfish. Robertson then ran into the house through Sean's bedroom window and into the bathroom where he washed his face. He then walked into the den where Edna Brow, Sean's grandmother, was watching TV, and he shot her. Robertson stole the old woman's purse and his friend's meds after the murders, then he stole her car and fled to Las Vegas. He provided a comprehensive and graphic written confession to authorities when they apprehended him. The jury in his trial two years later also learned how he killed Jeffrey Saunders, a 19-year-old 7-Eleven employee, a week before the double homicide at Brow's home. He received two life sentences for that murder, as well as Hill's, while Brow's death placed him on death row. Brent Brewer, 53 years old, 32 years on death row. Brewer was found guilty of capital murder and given the death penalty by a Randall County jury in June of 1991 for the 66-year-old Robert Doyle Laminac's stabbing death in 1990. Laminac was asked for a ride to the Salvation Army by Brewer and his co-defendant Christy Lynn Nistrom when Brewer fatally stabbed Laminac. Before being apprehended, the duo snatched Laminac's wallet, which contained $140 in cash. A jury also found Nistrom guilty of capital murder, and she was given a life sentence. Although he had been given a death sentence at first, that decision was overturned in 2007, and he was given a life term instead. Yet, in 2009, Brewer was back in the court for a new trial and sentence. James Ferron, the district attorney for Randall County, requested the death penalty a second time, and the jury upheld his request. Stephen Staley, 61 years old, 32 years on death row. Robert Redd, a manager of a steak and ale restaurant in Tarrant County, was kidnapped and fatally shot in 1991, and Stephen Kenneth Staley was found guilty and given the death penalty. On October 14, 1989, the murder took place soon before the restaurant closed. According to the Texas Attorney General's office, Staley, Tracy Duke, and Brenda Rayburn had committed crimes in four different states. Staley was suspected of killing another escapee when he broke out of a Colorado prison a month earlier. Just after dining, the three drew their firearms and ordered the workers into a kitchen storage. The Attorney General's office reported that an assistant manager had escaped during the chaos and had dialed 911. When the police arrived, Staley accused Red with activating a silent alarm. Red was held captive. Staley, Red, Duke, and Rayburn climbed inside the vehicle and sped away. The police started chasing them and the car eventually broke down. Officers arrived and discovered Red had been murdered and the three surrendered. Doctors testified that Staley had paranoid schizophrenia, a kind of persistent psychosis, which the CCA ruling stated had been routinely diagnosed for nearly 15 years and that his illness had worsened over time. Staley was incompetent to be executed without medication. He could comprehend the charges clearly enough with medication to meet legal requirements. The court had to decide if Staley could be administered drugs against his will in order for him to comprehend the situation and be put to death. Although the opinion held that there are situations in which forcible medicine is permissible, Staley's case never included those situations being demonstrated. Daryl Wheatfall, 58 years old, 31 years on death row. 
Following a dispute over $50, Whitfall was found guilty of killing James Fitzgerald, 62 years old, and his wife, LB, 64 years old and disabled, in southeast Houston in December 1990. The Fitzgeralds were killed by Whitfall and his co-defendant, Mac Terrell, when they went to their home to collect a debt from them. Three headshots were fired at each victim. The couple's son was also shot in the stomach, but he pulled through and was able to testify in the case and pinpoint the offenders. Whitfall broke into a crack house two days before the Fitzgerald killings and murdered one of the three persons he shot in the head. He then entered the garage where he stabbed 25 times a different individual. This man also passed away. In exchange for testifying against Whitfall, Mac Terrell struck a deal and received a 50-year sentence. Brian Davis, 55 years old, 31 years on death row. The state of Texas handed down a death sentence for Davis for the murder of a man. According to court records, Brian Davis and his wife Tina McDonald, a female companion, met 31-year-old Michael Foster, a person with slight mental retardation, at a bar. The group returned to the victim's house. When they got there, Brian Davis killed the victim by stabbing him numerous times. Six days later, Brian Davis and Tina McDonald carried out the same assault on a different victim, who this time managed to survive. Foster had promised the pair gas money in exchange for a ride home, angering Davis when he later informed them that he was out of cash. Although Davis initially admitted to the murder and accepted responsibility, he later withdrew the admission and claimed he was only attempting to save his wife. McDonald is serving 40 years after pleading guilty to aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon and auto theft for an offense a week after Foster was killed. William Mason, 69 years old, 31 years on death row. In 1992, Mason was found guilty of the murder of his wife, Deborah Ann Mason, and sentenced to death. Because his wife was playing her radio too loudly on January 17, 1991, he kidnapped her and beat her to death underneath the Highway 59 bridge over the San Jacinto River in Humboldt. This happened just 18 days after being released from prison for doing time for a murder and an attempted murder. With the deadly prison group known as the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas, Mason had advanced to the position of captain. He was given a 55-year sentence for robbing and killing a black man in 1977, and he spent more than 10 years in prison. The couple had spent the morning with friends, drinking and smoking, on the day Deborah Mason, 33 years old, was killed. He started beating her in front of their friends after they got into a fight. Debra Mason was carried to the bridge where she was slain when the altercation got out of hand and she was bound and gagged. Eugene Broxton, 68 years old, 31 years on death row. On June 3, 1986, as he was running away from a robbery, Broxton fired two shots at Pasadena police officer Walt Hayes. Hayes managed to escape and shortly after that, he was able to catch his attacker in an apartment building. Broxton received a 13-year sentence after being found guilty on the charges of aggravated robbery and attempted murder. Four years later, in 1990, he got parole. He broke into Gary Wayne Stuckwish apartment in Northeast Houston on April 6, 1991 and fatally stabbed the 46-year-old. Broxton stole the man's car after taking all of his possessions, but left it the very following day. Gordon John Miller, a 59-year-old TV guide salesman, was kidnapped by Broxton 13 days later in a location near Federal Road and I-10. Before escaping in his pickup, Broxton fatally stabbed Miller in front of witnesses. He made an attempt to attack Albert Madden, who escaped the assault five days later. In Pasadena on May 2nd, Broxton was detained for stealing a $20 radio from an East Houston Walmart. Due to the fact that the offense was deemed to be a minor infraction, prison overcrowding, and the fact that the authorities were unable to track down Broxton's parole officer at the time, he was just fined and released from jail. Broxton broke into the house of retired and disabled Albert Krieger, 64 years old, just four days later. He strangled him to death before reportedly pawning the victim's diamond ring. On May 10th, Broxton went back to the same Walmart where he had been detained for stealing the radio and took 65-year-old Gary Leon Andrews hostage while brandishing a rifle. 
Then, after robbing Andrews, the two of them drove to an isolated location where the man shot Andrews in the mouth and stabbed him in the stomach. Despite suffering severe wounds, Andrews lived. On May 16th, Broxton went to Channel View and saw the hotel room occupied by Waylon Dawkins, who was 23 years old, and Sheila Dawkins, who was 20 years old, a newlywed couple from Louisiana. By pretending to be a motel clerk, Broxton gained entry to the room. Once inside, he bound, gagged, pistol-whipped, shot them with his .44 Magnum, took their money, and left them for dead. Waylon, who had been shot in the head, lived. Sheila, who had injuries to the chest and arms, passed away. Broxton was sentenced to death for the murder of Sheila Dawkins. Since he received the death penalty in this situation, all the other cases were dropped. George McFarland, 63 years old, 31 years on death row. In 1992, a Harris County man was given a death sentence for the murder and robbery of a local grocery shop owner, 43-year-old Kenneth Kwan, who was shot dead as he returned to his business with a bag of $27,000 in cash from the bank. Although there was never any solid evidence linking McFarland to the murder, his lead attorney hardly prepared for the case, rarely spoke with co-counsel, offered no evidence, and even slept for significant portions of the trial. Regular customer Carolyn Barty, a civilian employee at the Houston Police Department, happened to be sitting outside and saw the entire shooting. She tentatively identified McFarland in a photo lineup, despite the fact that the shooter she initially described did not match the suspect. Not one of the suspected accomplices was ever detained or forced to give a testimony, and there were no prints or other tangible proof linking any of the suspects to the crime. Six weeks later, McFarland was taken into custody when his teenage nephew called Crime Stoppers, and claimed to have overheard his uncle confessing to a robbery. McFarland had a criminal history and a history of drug usage. However, after McFarland had already been placed on death row, the teen changed his mind and retracted his statement. David Wood, 66 years old, 30 years on death row. In 1987, a number of young women in the age range of 14 to 24 went missing from El Paso, Texas. The bodies of six women were soon found in shallow graves in the desert, and the murders became known as the Northeast Desert Murders. American serial killer and rapist David Wood, sometimes known as the Desert Killer, murdered at least six women in El Paso, Texas between May and August 1987 before concealing their bodies in the desert. Despite his denials, he was found guilty and given the death penalty for the killings of Ivy Williams, Desiree Whitley, Karen Baker, Angelica Frausto, Rosa Maria Cassio, and Don Smith. The state provided ample proof of Wood's impending risk throughout the trial's punishment phase. The state presented evidence that Wood had previously been found guilty of essay of a child and indecency with a child. He was sentenced to 5, 20, and 50 years in prison for those offenses respectively. A worker testified that on September 19, 1987, Wood approached her as she was waiting for a bus and offered her money in exchange for She entered Wood's vehicle and instructed him to find a hotel. Instead, he drew a knife and threatened to kill her while also essaying her. As the truck was still driving, the woman leaped out and hurt herself. Another lady testified that Wood grabbed her when she was 13 years old and essayed her under a bridge as she was walking home. A third lady claimed that he approached her when she was 12 years old and requested her assistance in locating his dog. At last, he grabbed her and proceeded to essay her. Another woman said that when she was 23 years old, Wood and another man gave her a ride home from work. She claimed that after arriving to some apartments, both males got out. Wood returned to the truck by himself and began to drive. He stopped by the side of the road and they said her. Tony Ford, 50 years old, 30 years on death row, for killing 18-year-old Armando Murillo during a house invasion in El Paso in late 1991, Ford received a death sentence. The attackers also tried to kill the mother and two sisters of Armando Murillo. The Murillo family saw their cousin perform on Christmas play on December 18, 1991. 
At the conclusion of the play, the family returned to the home of their mother, Mira Murillo, for a quick dinner. Later that evening, the mother and her three kids, Mira Magdalena, Armando and Lisa, planned to go Christmas shopping together. After supper, Lisa was in the kitchen, Mira Magdalena was getting ready in her bedroom for her shopping excursion, and Armando was in the family room watching television. A short while later, Mira Magdalena emerged into the hallway to ask her family to move quickly. At that time, she spotted her mother and her brother retreating from the doorway. Her mother was backing up as if she was scared for her life, and her brother appeared as if he had been hit in the head and was huddled in the corner. Mira claimed that after a brief period of time, she noticed Tony Ford standing near her, right at the entrance to her bedroom. She also saw his companion, later identified as Van Nash Belton. She testified that they both had guns. Lisa stated that she heard a barging in, just a lot of commotion, like somebody kicking wood. She saw two strangers in the hallway with guns. The two men ordered all the family members to kneel on the floor and be quiet. They demanded to know where the man of the house was, and where the money was, and then demanded jewelry and other valuables, including car keys. When Lisa threw a set of car keys at Ford, he became angry. Then he shot Armando in the back of the head, he shot Mrs. Murillo in the head, he shot but missed Mira, who feigned injury, and shot Lisa in the shoulder. Ford was the shooter and the person who was dominant doing the most of the talking and giving most of the orders, according to Mira and Lisa. Jose Rivera, 61 years old, 29 years on death row, for the murder of 3-year-old Daniel Luis Blanco in Brownsville, Texas, while performing or attempting an aggravated essay, Rivera was found guilty and given the death penalty in May 1994. Veronica Zavala moved into the Brownsville flat close to Daniel Luis Blanco's family in June 1993. Soon after, Zavala grew close to Carolina Blanco, the victim's mother. In the morning of July 9, 1993, Carolina and her two sons were at home. Luis left the apartment briefly before entering it again with Zavala. Zavala had given Luis a popsicle, which he was holding. She requested to use the phone. After she took the call, Zavala opened the door and exited with Louis. Many calls were temporarily taking up Carolina Blanco's time in the meanwhile. Carolina went to search for Zavala and Louis around five minutes after they had departed. Neither Zavala nor Louis could be found, according to her. After that, Carolina contacted the police, who then started looking for Louis. Zavala went back to her flat without Louis around three hours later. According to testimony from Carolina Blanco, Zavala was biting on a popsicle stick that her son had earlier that day. Zavala became furious and denied knowing anything about Carolina's son, and she refused to give any details. On the morning of July 10, 1993, a tiny pond in the nearby Lincoln Park was where Lewis's naked body was discovered floating face down. The water close to his body included his checkered shorts and white tennis shoes. A single knot was used to secure a ligature made from the victim's underwear waistband around his neck. Police discovered indications that Lewis had also been essayed. Despite spending 18 to 36 hours in the water, pathologist Dr. Marguerite DeWitt testified that the victim did not drown. Instead, ligature strangulation was the cause of death. The child's father, Alejandro Blanco, testified that Luis had been in excellent health on the morning of the murder. In a statement she made on July 10, 1993, Zavala admitted to her involvement in the murder and named José Alfredo Rivera as a suspect. Rivera also confessed to strangling the boy and using a finger to essay him. He admitted to this in two written statements on July 10 and a videotaped oral confession on July 11. The child's underpants had been cut off and tied around his neck with a single knot, the time of death was compatible with the time indicated by Rivera, and various other facts of Rivera's confession were supported by independent evidence in addition to the child's strangulation and injuries. Co-defendant Veronica Zavala is currently serving a life sentence after being charged with capital murder as well. Gerald Elridge, 59 years old, 29 years on death row. 
Elridge was found guilty of killing Teresa Bogani and her mother Cynthia Bogani. Both Cynthia's and Elridge's nine-year-old son Terrell and Cynthia's then-boyfriend Wayne Dodson were shot, but they survived the attack, where the two were killed. At Elridge's capital murder trial, Terrell Bogany testified. He informed the jury that his father had shot his sister between the eyes at close range after he had kicked through the door. He also talked about how his father had stood over him and fired at his head during both the shooting of Dodson and his own shooting. He claimed that the gunshot entered his shoulder as he turned his head. In addition, he claimed to have seen Elridge chasing after his mother as she fled the apartment. She was shot outdoors. Elridge refused to watch the penalty phase of his 1994 trial. Before passing judgment on the death penalty, a jury in Harris County took about 30 minutes to deliberate. Documents stated Elridge was convicted in 1985 to eight years in jail for attempted murder for shooting a man eight times. After being freed three years later, he was sent back to jail in 1990 for abusing his son. Records showed he attempted to kill the youngster after receiving his release four months later. Charles Raby, 53 years old, 29 years on death row. He was found guilty of the murder of Edna Franklin, who shared a modest home with her two grandchildren, Lee Rose and Eric Benj. In their testimony, Benj and Rose stated that on October 15, 1992, they left Mrs. Franklin at home just before 4 p.m. Benj stated that when he went back later that evening, he discovered Mrs. Franklin dead in the living room, the front door unlocked and open, the rear door open, and the lights off. Each of her hands had hair on them that was found. She had been stabbed to death and was completely naked below the waist. She may have been assayed, but the medical examiner was unable to confirm this. The residence had been ransacked. Mrs. Franklin's personal belongings and the contents of her pocketbook were spread across her room. Raby was regarded as a suspect because several neighbors believed that they had seen him leaving the Franklin house that night, even though none of them had actually seen his face. They just saw a man that was about the same height and built as Raby. When he was arrested, he eventually signed a confession letter in which he admitted guilt, so he received the death penalty. The case is controversial due to several reasons. The DNA testing excluded Raby from the crime scene, but his defense never got that result before the trial. The blood they found was Franklin's, the hair they found was partly Franklin's and partly her grandson's, it was later discovered that the detectives coerced him into signing the confession by threatening to have his then-pregnant girlfriend arrested and the baby sent to foster care. Franklin's nephew pointed out that there was another man that could have done this, and he was previously in their house as he was helping paint the residence. That man stole his paycheck and a shotgun and was also a drug addict. Erica Shepard, 50 years old, 28 years on death row. Shepard was held legally responsible for the robbery-related death of Marilyn Meager. On June 30, 1993, James Dickerson and Erica Shepard made the decision to take Marilyn Meager's car while she was loading clothes into her apartment from her car. The duo tackled Meager inside her flat and repeatedly slashed her throat with knives as she pleaded for her life. After having her head covered in a plastic bag, she was then struck in the head with a 10-pound statue. Shepard was given the death penalty in March 1995. James Dickerson received the death penalty as well, although he passed away from AIDS while awaiting execution. At the time of the crime, Shepard and Dickerson were both 19 years old, and Erica was already a mother of three. She admitted that she was present when the crime was committed and that she was responsible for not intervening to stop it, but she insists that she did not really carry out the murder. Scott Panetti, 65 years old, 28 years on death row. In 1992, shortly after his wife and young child left him in Fredericksburg to live with her parents, Panetti roughed up his beard, put on camouflage clothes and forced open his in-laws front door. He shot the Alvarados dead, then held his wife and young son hostage for several hours. After putting on a suit, he turned himself into police. He was institutionalized for homicidal tendencies toward his family two years prior to killing the Alvarados. 
He also claimed the community was conspiring against him. His attorneys claimed that around the age of 20, when he was hospitalized in 1978 for serious electrical burns sustained while working as a lineman, he began to exhibit symptoms of his condition. He started acting out the illusion that he was fighting Satan in 1986, burying his family's possessions in the yard to get rid of the demon. More than four decades have passed since Panetti's mental condition was first mentioned. He had 14 hospitalizations for psychiatric behavior before entering prison. According to court documents, he was frequently determined to have schizophrenia and to be seriously impaired. Michael Gonzalez, 50 years old, 28 years on death row. In Odessa, Texas, Gonzalez spent many years residing next door to Manuel, age 73, and Merced Aguirre, age 65. While the Aguirre family was fast asleep on the evening of April 21, 1994, Gonzalez broke into the house. As the couple awoke, Gonzalez stabbed them before robbing the house. According to reports, the woman had defensive wounds on the bottoms of her feet, wrists, and legs. Manuel Aguirre suffered 11 stab wounds. Gonzalez took a .22 caliber pistol, a camera, a microwave, a VCR, and a pocketbook. Gonzalez was found guilty of killing both Manuel and Merced and received a death sentence on December 12, 1995. His execution date was set by the court for March 8, 2022, but Gonzalez won a reprieve on March 3, 2022. The family of Aguirre intended to watch the execution. Larry Hatton, 49 years old, 27 years on death row. Isaac Jackson, who was five years old, was shot while he was in bed with his mother at their Corpus Christi residence in 1995. Hatton was found guilty of the murder. Tabitha Thompson, the mother of the boy, was hit four times by bullets, but she managed to survive. The young boy was shot twice and passed away. According to court records, Hatton entered Isaac Robinson's residence, the child's father and Thompson's boyfriend, forced open a bedroom door and then opened fire in vengeance for an upsurge in drug dealer fights. Hatton would later admit that he had planned to kill Robinson, but that he wasn't at home. On the appeal, Hatton unsuccessfully argued that the juror at his trial was biased in favor of the prosecution since the juror knew Robinson and Hatton's stepfather, bought drugs from Robinson, and lied about his drug usage when asked about it. The jury allegedly lied when asked about the relationships during a court hearing, according to Hatton's appeal. The appeals court stated that there was substantial evidence Hatton had admitted to wanting to kill Robinson, and Hatton had been positively identified as the shooter. Pablo Melendez, 48 years old, 27 years on death row. Melendez, who was 18 years old, visited and drank beer with a group of friends in the driveway of a Fort Worth home on the evening of September 1, 1994. He announced his desire to rob someone at around 11.30 p.m. in a voice loud enough for most people to hear, and then he left alone. The two victims in this case had parked their pickup truck next to a walk-up payphone in the neighboring parking lot of a self-service car wash. They had been there for a while, when Tommy Joe Seagraves, one of them, observed Melendez approaching the truck from behind. He informed Michael Sanders, the driver of the vehicle, of Melendez's arrival as Seagraves watched. He took up a position around 15 feet away from the driver's seat. Without giving any prior notice or even speaking, Melendez turned and fired one shot into the car's cab, striking Seagraves in the neck. Then, he made public his initial demand that Sanders turn over the entire amount of cash in the truck. Sanders was pulled out of the car, made to walk up to Melendez, and forced to hand over the cash while pleading with him not to shoot. Sanders turned and began walking back toward the truck where Seagraves was still lying injured and unable to move after being relieved of his money. Melendez fired once more before Sanders could get to the car, hitting him in the back. Melendez quickly fired three more shots, all of which hit Sanders in the arm or the back. Eventually, Sanders fell forward through the unlocked driver's side door and came to rest with his head against Seagrave's knee in the truck's floorboard. Melendez walked up, reached into the cab with the gun in his hand, put the muzzle close to Seagrave's forehead and pulled the trigger while Sanders lay dying. Nothing occurred. 
Since the gun was empty, Melendez simply turned around and started to walk away. In the end, Seagraves had two bullet wounds, the first when Melendez first approached and the second from a round that had killed Sanders but missed Seagraves and struck his arm. Sanders was hit four times and passed away shortly after. Joseph Pristash, 67 years old, 27 years on death row. Fera Frata, 33 years old, was discovered in the garage of her house after neighbors who heard gunshots called for assistance. Frata was transported to Herman Hospital by life flight helicopter, where she passed away at about 11.30 p.m. from at least one gunshot wound to the head, according to officials. Shortly after hearing the gunshots, witnesses reportedly noticed a silver or gray hatchback car depart Frata's home. They claimed that the car had one headlight and was driven by two males who looked to be clothed in black. Robert Frata, Fara's ex-husband and a former police officer, hired Pristash and another man to murder the woman. Frata was already executed in 2023. Victor Saldano, 52 years old, 27 years on death row. Victor Hugo Saldano, also known as Victor Rodriguez, is an Argentine man who has been given the death penalty by the Texas government. He is the only Argentine who has received the death sentence in the U.S. Saldano, a Cordoba native, entered the country illegally in 1995 and began working as a day laborer. He initially resided in New York City before moving to Dallas, where he shared a residence with Jorge Chavez, a resident of Mexico. He and his co-defendant Chavez kidnapped Paul Ray King on November 25, 1995 at a grocery store in Plano, Texas by forcing him into a car with a revolver. Saldano killed King at Laban Lake with five rounds. Saldano's mother, Lydia Guerrero, wrote Pope Francis a letter in 2013 pleading with him to save her son from death. Pope Francis made his opposition to the death penalty in all circumstances known on March 20, 2015 and August 2, 2018. Anthony Medina, 49 years old, 27 years on death row. On January 1, 1996, just after midnight, Medina, then 21 years old, drove past the Rodriguez home and fired into a group of kids and teenagers who were standing in the house's well-lit front yard. The young people were there for a New Year's Eve celebration, largely with family. At 5 to 7 feet from the ground and from only a few feet away from some of the victims, Medina shot into the crowd of people in the front yard. The home, a few cars, and three people were all hit by the bullets. An abdominal bullet pierced Rocio Pedroza. She made it through. The two people who were killed in the most direct line of Medina's bullets were David Rodriguez, 8 years old, and his sister, Diane Rodriguez, 13 years old. David was killed by two wounds, one of which went through his brain and into his chest, the other through his arm. Injuries Diane received included a deadly one that entered her neck through her left shoulder and a non-fatal one that perforated her right breast. Medina was on probation for six felony offenses at the time of the shooting. Garcia White, 60 years old, 27 years on death row. White went to a crack home, which was an apartment in Northeast Houston, owned by 38-year-old Bonita Edwards, a widow with two kids, Burnett and Annette, who were both 16 years old. To the dismay of Edwards' daughters, who had attempted to move in with their grandmother out of fear, the flat was routinely used as a safe space for users. On November 30th, White arrived at the flat with the intention of using and having with Bonita, but when she declined, he became angry. Then, after getting a knife out, he repeatedly stabbed her, frightening her two girls. After essaying Annette in the bedroom, he stabbed her in the chest and slashed her throat. He then went to the bathroom and did the same to Burnett. After killing the girls, White wrapped a blanket around part of Annette's body and then stuffed a towel into Burnett's mouth before fleeing as swiftly as he could. The bodies weren't found until December 2nd, when King Solomon, Edward's worried boyfriend, went to the apartment to check on them. The triple homicide remained a cold case for six years, despite thorough investigations that failed to produce any plausible suspects. In an attempt to rob a Houston convenience store in July 1995, 
White and a friend called Tecumseh Manuel killed the clerk, Hai Van Pham. Both men were detained after the murder, but Manuel later told police that White allegedly confessed to him about the 1989 murder of the Edwards family. He was then interrogated in connection with the triple homicide, and although he originally denied involvement, White eventually admitted guilt after seeing a section of Manuel's interview. Paul Slater, 49 years old, 27 years on death row. According to court documents, Slater was supposed to meet up with three men in July 1995 to offer them some crack. Eric Washington, Roderick Martin, and Glenn Andrews, prospective buyers, arrived with a combined $3,000 in cash. There is a significant disagreement as to what happened after two guys in a Cadillac showed up, but ultimately Slater killed Martin and Andrews while Washington fled the scene. Police located the bloodstained Cadillac a month later. A few weeks later, Slater admitted to the killings, but he claimed that he did so in self-defense. Although some tests have given him a low IQ score of 63, a 1991 evaluation gave him a score of 77. Darley Routier, 53 years old, 26 years on death row. Routier was found guilty of murdering her two young kids, Damon, age 5, and Devon, age 6. Devon and Damon were killed in Routier's home by a large kitchen knife, and Routier was stabbed in the arm and throat. Routier informed the police that the incident was caused by an unknown invader. The defense claimed that Routier had no justification for killing her kids and that there were no witnesses, no confession, and no motivation in the case. The prosecution argued throughout the trial that Routier killed her sons because of the family's financial problems, that her injuries were self-inflicted, and that the crime scene had been fabricated. Howard Guidry, 47 years old, 26 years on death row. Farah Freta, 33 years old, was discovered in the garage of her house after neighbors who heard gunshots called for assistance. Even though Farah was transported to Herman Hospital by helicopter, she passed away because she had at least one gunshot wound to the head. Robert Frata, Farah's ex-husband and a former police officer, hired Pristash and Guidry to murder the woman. Frata was already executed and Pristash is also on death row. Eric Cathy, 52 years old, 26 years on death row. For the 1995 kidnapping murder of Cristina Castillo, who was taken by a group of men looking to steal her boyfriend's narcotics and money, Eric Cathy, a former mechanic from Houston's Third Ward, received a death sentence. He was allegedly the ringleader, but he has consistently maintained his innocence. His lawyers have argued that he should not be executed because of his low IQ on two separate occasions. In both cases, though, the case was returned to the Harris County Trial Court. He is mentally disabled, according to testimony from numerous professionals and according to two distinct district courts who recommended relief, but the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals disapproved of their conclusions. Carlos Trevino, 52 years old, 26 years on death row. Trevino, who was 21 years old at the time and a member of the Pistoleros street gang, encountered Linda Salinas, a student at Harlandale High School, on June 9, 1996. He had been released from jail a month earlier after serving time for an auto theft charge. On June 9, 1996, Linda, who was just 15 years old, was reportedly spotted getting into a car with a group of young guys, according to court records. Her partially dressed body was discovered in a creek the following day in Espada Park on the south side. She had been essayed and stabbed to death. Although three other people were found guilty of the murder as well, only Trevino was given the death penalty. Carlos Ayestas, 54 years old, 26 years on death row. Santiago Panek was killed by Carlos Ayestas when he was attempting to commit robbery or burglary and he was found guilty of capital murder. Ayestas and a friend went to see a car that Anna McDougall, who lived across the street from Panek, was selling around two weeks prior to the murder. While the men examined the car, McDougall spent about 15 minutes inside her home. McDougall observed the two guys leaving Panek's home when she returned outdoors. The men explained that Panek had called them over to check out some furniture she was trying to sell when she questioned what they were doing. On September 5, 1995, at about 8.30 a.m., 
Panek's son Ellen left the house. At 12.23 p.m., he arrived home for lunch and rang the doorbell, but no one answered. He inserted his key into the doorknob, but found that it was already unlocked. He entered and noticed that the room had been looted and that things were missing. The state of the rest of the house was largely the same. Ellen dialed 911 from a neighbor, Maria Diaz's residence. He went home and discovered his mother on the master bathroom floor. Her ankles were tapped with silver duct tapes. After leaving Diaz's home, Ellen went back and requested her to check on his mother's condition. Diaz entered the Panek's residence and called her name. She discovered Mrs. Panek on the ground with her face down. She was not breathing and her face was a dark color. Dr. Marilyn Moore, the assistant medical examiner for Harris County, performed an autopsy that showed Panek had been struck numerous times while she was still alive, causing numerous bruises and lacerations. She had bruises on each side of her pelvic region, just above the hips, as well as damaged bones in her right elbow and neck. An internal examination uncovered significant head and neck bleeding. She developed a second fracture in the roof of her right orbit, which was brought on by considerable force. Dr. Moore concluded that none of these wounds were severe enough to cause Panique's death. Asphyxiation was the cause of death. Police recovered fingerprints from the crime scene. Ramiro Ibarra, 69 years old, 26 years on death row. Ibarra killed and essayed a 16-year-old Hispanic girl, Maria Zuniga, on March 6, 1987. The girl was attacked by Ibarra, which was a family friend, while she was caring for her two young nephews inside her home. Following an essay and beating, she was strangled with an electrical cable. Ibarra was found to have scratches on his face and torso when he was interrogated. Later, Ibarra's skin was found under the victim's fingernails. Once a judge suppressed some of the case's evidence, Ibarra was let go. Prosecutors were able to reopen the case almost 10 years later thanks to legislative improvements to the regulations governing the presenting of evidence. On October 10, 1996, Ibarra was taken into custody while residing in Bell County. Reynaldo Dennis, 67 years old, 26 years on death row. On the 24th of January, 1996, Dennis carried out a sophisticated robbery while killing a Hispanic man. Dennis and his brother had set up an office in the victim's building to understand how it was laid up and where the security cameras were before organizing the robbery. On the day of the robbery, they paid the maid to leave the back door open to the building. The victim was shot dead when he was seated at his desk in his Houston, Texas office. More than $250,000 in cash and $4.25 million in diamonds and stones were stolen from his office safe. Dennis disguised himself with a baseball cap and fake mustache and went to the first floor with the goal of erasing the surveillance videotape that had shown him and his brother entering the building after killing the victim and emptying the safe. An unarmed security guard who was there to confront him was shot twice and left for dead. After removing the videotape from the security camera, Dennis ran away. Once a gunsmith who created a silencer for the 9mm pistol Dennis used in the heist went to the police, Dennis was apprehended. The wounded security guard made a full recovery as well and also recognized Dennis as the shooter. Jeffrey Wood, 50 years old, 25 years on death row. Wood and his co-defendant Daniel Renault had made friends with the assistant manager William Bill Bunker and the clerk Chris Lee Kieran at their neighborhood Texaco convenience station in Kerrville, Texas. The four of them had discussed planning a heist to divide the loot four ways after the holiday season, and Bunker had divulged intimate knowledge to Renault and Wood about the store's safe and CCTV recording technology. When Kieran decided not to participate, Wood did too. Later, Bunker claimed in court that he never informed Renault that he was also giving up the scheme. In spite of his involvement in the scheme to defraud the store, Bunker was never charged as a party to the crime, even though he could have stopped Kieran from dying, according to a police report. Renault and Wood left for Divine, Texas on January 2, 1996, to return Wood's brother struck. They drove to the Texaco station before leaving Kerrville, and Wood thought Renault was going into the store to buy drinks and snacks. 
Kieran was instructed to go to the back office by Renault as soon as he entered the store, pointing a gun at him. Renault shot Kieran in the face after he refused to cooperate. Wood exited the truck after hearing a shot, entered the store, and was confronted by Renault, who demanded that he help him under duress. He also threatened to kill Wood's girlfriend and daughter if he didn't. About $11,000 in cash and checks were kept in the safe and cash box. On the day of the murder, Wood and Renault were both taken into custody. Renault had thrown the murder weapon from the truck in Valverde County and would help the police find it. Renault was executed in 2002 after confessing to shooting Chris Kieran to death. Brittany Holberg, 50 years old, 25 years on death row. Holberg killed and robbed an 80-year-old white man inside his home. The victim received roughly 60 stabbings as well as a hammer blow. A fork a butcher knife, a grapefruit knife, and paring knife were tools that she used. The victim's throat had been forced down more than five inches by a lamp post. Brittany Holberg, a sex worker, was hired by Towery. According to defense attorney Catherine Brown Dodson, Towery was falsely portrayed as an elderly man who was innocent during the trial, and Holberg acted in self-defense when Towery attacked her. A.B. Towery, the victim, reportedly struggled with drug addiction as well. His son, Russell Towery, testified that his father had once drawn a knife on him in a fit of rage. Further evidence also revealed the victim's violent background with his ex-wife and children. Given that there is sufficient evidence to suggest that Holberg may have actually acted in self-defense, this case seems to fall into a more gray area. Larry Estrada, 44 years old, 25 years on death row. Larry Estrada and one other defendant robbed a convenience store on February 21, 1997 in Houston. One male clerk was shot and murdered during the robbery. The other clerk was shot and was believed to be dead. Estrada and his co-defendant stole more than $23,000 in cash from the store's safe in addition to the cashier's wallets. The surviving clerk identified Estrada and his co-defendant. Chong Tong 47 years old, 25 years on death row. On April 4, 1997, Tong shot and murdered an off-duty police officer in Houston while robbing a grocery shop. Officer Trin was working at his parents' convenience store when a man walked in and attempted to rob him. The officer was shot in the head and died at the scene. Before escaping, Tong also stole the officer's jewels. Alan Bridgers, 52 years old. 25 years on death row. Mary Amy, 53 years old, was murdered by Alan Bridgers on May 23, 1997, in her home. Amy and Bridgers had been sharing a home for quite some time. Amy kept in her purse approximately $1,600 she had borrowed from a bank to build a fence. She also had jewelry in her possession that was worth $2,000 to $3,000, which she also carried in her purse. Bridgers admitted that he murdered Amy in order to obtain the cash and jewelry. He claimed that after Amy climbed into bed with him, he shot her in the neck, took her pocketbook and Lincoln Town car keys, and fled out the front door. He later left the car at a bus terminal in Dallas, Texas. Then Bridgers took a bus to Florida. He was arrested in Fort Lauderdale, Florida on May 28, 1997. On May 25, Amy's body was found by a niece. Rodney Reed, 56 years old, 25 years on death row. On May 18, 1998, a Bestrop County District Court jury found Reed guilty of kidnapping, essaying, and killing Stacy Stites, a 19-year-old native of Giddings, Texas. A month later, on April 23, 1996, an unidentified body had been found in some bushes close to a gravel road behind Bestrop High School. Stites' fiancé's pickup truck which she frequently used to get to work, had been discovered earlier, parked close to the school. The police discovered that Stites had been beaten and essayed before she was strangled to death between 3 and 5 in the morning with her own belt. She was dressed in a black bra and jeans when she was found. The belt that had been used to kill her was partially discovered near her body, and the remaining portion was discovered close to the truck. Her shirt was found next to her partially charred body. 
Stites had been living in Giddings with Jimmy Fennell Jr., a local police officer, who was to be her husband in three weeks. On July 12, 1996, a woman who wanted to remain anonymous called the police and expressed her suspicion that Stites and her son may have been together in the hours prior to her death. Stites' brother took his own life in 1997 because he was unable to cope with her passing. Based on similarities between the Stites case and the assault on other women that occurred six months later on November 9, 1996, the investigators started to think Reed had been involved in the Stites' murder. Although Reed first denied knowing her, he later stated that they had consensual intercourse the day before her passing after his DNA was found inside her body. The state argued for the death penalty during the trial's penalty phase on the grounds that Reed was accused of essaying four women, a 12-year-old, attacking another woman and other crimes. Julius Murphy, 45 years old, 25 years on death row. Jason Airy, a guy who was stranded on a Texarkana roadside, was shot and killed by Murphy, who was found guilty of the crime. According to the prosecution's case during Murphy's trial, the 18-year-old robbed, shot, and killed Airy in the fall of 1997 after assisting him with his stopped vehicle. Others involved that day, including his ex-girlfriend and the friend from whom he allegedly borrowed the firearm used in the crime, testified against Murphy. Murphy and his bodies were captured by authorities in Arlington, Texas, after making their way through Arkansas, Tennessee, and ultimately Texas. Christina Davis, who was with Murphy during the course of these events, testified that she had a fight with him the day before the murder and that during the fight he hit her repeatedly. She also told the jury about the altercation between her and Murphy on the day of their arrest, including how Murphy continued to assault her and made threats to shoot her in the leg to prevent her from fleeing. Anthony Barty, 66 years old, 25 years on death row, for killing his 37-year-old neighbor David Cook in August 1996 and stealing his motorcycle, Barty received a death sentence. He shot Cook after stabbing him in the back first. Before the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans, Barty's attorney argued that genetic evidence demonstrated someone else was at Cook's house the night of the crime. However, Barty repeatedly changed his account. He was spotted riding Cook's motorcycle, he lied to his friends about how he acquired the vehicle, and prior to the murder, he said he wanted to ace a white dude named David. Arthur Burton, 53 years old, 25 years on death row. On July 29, 1997, Burton approached a woman who was jogging around her neighborhood in Houston, Texas. Then, while attempting to essay her, he dragged her into a nearby wooded area. The victim started screaming when she heard the witness coming. After that, Burton killed her by strangling her with her own shoelaces. He made good his escape on foot. On July 29, 1997, just after 7 p.m., Nancy Adelman left the house to take a quick jog along the bayou close to their home. Sharon Lallon was watching her kids play by some large equipment close to the bayou around 7.20 p.m. She was astonished to see a man on a bicycle who appeared to be angry and filthy standing near her when she turned around. Lallon greeted the man, but all he did was give her a derogatory glance. She called her kids and fled back home after feeling threatened by the incident. Lallon noticed Adelman walking along the bayou as she called her kids. Afterwards, the witness recognized the bicycle rider. The following morning, the police found Adelman's body in a three to four foot deep hole in the densely forested region of the jogging track. The authorities assumed that she had been essayed because her shorts and underwear had been taken off and dumped some distance from the body. Felix Rocha, 47 years old, 25 years on death row. Rafael Fuentes was a security guard at La Camelia, a nightclub in Harris County, on November 26, 1994. Around 7 p.m., Reynaldo Munoz, who owned a few pool tables at the bar, showed up. Fuentes stood at the club entrance for 10 to 15 minutes while Munoz spoke with him. Munoz noted that Fuentes was carrying a revolver in a holster. Two men, one tall and one short, moved swiftly in the direction of Fuentes. 
Munoz stepped aside as Fuentes halted the men and started to search them. Munoz noticed the tall man raising his arms as if to authorize a pat down. The short man then pulled out a gun, pointed it at Fuentes, demanded Fuentes' gun and reached for Fuentes' gun also. Munoz didn't witness what transpired after that because he had already started to leave the area. He heard two or three gunshots while he was running away. Michael Junko, a patrol officer, was made aware of a shooting by a police radio dispatch. When Junko got on the site, he discovered Fuentes' body. Junko saw that Fuentes' holster was empty of a firearm. Virgilio Maldonado was eventually revealed to be the tall man and Felix Rocha, according to law enforcement sources, was the short man. The guys apparently got into a fight before and the murder was meant to get revenge for the humiliation Rocha suffered. Charles Flores, 54 years old, 24 years on death row. For the 1998 murder of Elizabeth Black, Charles Don Flores received a death sentence. Eyewitness testimony collected through investigative hypnosis was the foundation for his conviction. Black's next-door neighbor, Jill Bargainer, remembered seeing two guys outside her house the morning of the murder. According to the brief, Bargainer's hypnotized composite sketch does not resemble Flores in any manner. Even after the hypnosis, Bargainer still failed to recognize Flores in a lineup. But at trial, after a period of time and the case had polluted her memory due to media coverage, she gave an in-court identification of Flores that resulted in his conviction. Joel Escobedo, 61 years old, 24 years on death row. In 1999, a jury found Joel Escobedo guilty of capital murder for shooting and killing a 65-year-old man at a bus stop in Houston in 1998. After being robbed and pistol-whipped, Guadalupe Garcia was shot. Escobedo is one of more than a dozen prisoners who were assessed by psychologist George Denkowski and ended up on Texas death row. Denkowski received criticism from a state medical board for using improper assessment techniques in criminal cases. Texas reprimanded a psychologist who used what critics say were unscientific methods to examine at least 25 death row prisoners for intellectual disabilities, two of whom were later executed. In a settlement, Dr. George Denkowski agreed to stop performing similar evaluations in criminal cases and to pay a fine of $5,500. Dr. Denkowski was the go-to psychologist for prosecutors who wanted to prove defendants were not mentally handicapped and therefore eligible for the death penalty. His reliability earned him the nickname Dr. Death among defense lawyers. What does the, what does the term mental retardation mean to you? Good news. What does, what does the term mental retardation mean to you? Tell me what, it, what you think it is. Somebody who's... Uh... Who don't know much, I mean, don't know uh, what other people don't know. Okay, that's kind of generally it. That was Dr. George Denkowski testing Daniel Plata. A judge later said the evaluation was full of fatal errors and commuted Plata's death sentence to life. Charles Thompson, 53 years old, 24 years on death row. On April 30, 1998, Thompson received a death sentence for the murders of his girlfriend, Denise Hayslip, and her other partner, Darren Kane. Thompson gained notoriety in 2005 when, after being sentenced to death a second time at a resentencing hearing, he escaped from the Harris County Jail in Houston, Texas by posing as an employee of the Attorney General's office and using a fake ID badge. Four days later, while intoxicated, using a payphone outside a liquor store in Shreveport, Louisiana, he was apprehended. He told detectives that by pretending to be a Hurricane Katrina evacuee, he was able to obtain food and clothing. Also, he received money from Shreveport's Good Samaritans. 90% of the people who watch my channel are not subscribed. If you find my videos interesting, please hit that subscribe button. It will help me a lot in reaching more people on the platform. Thanks in advance. Ruben Gutierrez, 46 years old, 24 years on death row. Escolastica Harrison, 85 years old, was murdered on September 5, 1998 in Brownsville by Ruben Gutierrez and his co-defendants René Garcia and Pedro Gracia Garza Jr. In order to rob the victim of the money she stored in a safe, Gutierrez and his fellow defendants broke into the victim's office. 
she was fatally stabbed multiple times in the head. Ruben received a death sentence in 1999, even though he took part in the robbery, but he did not kill the victim. His co-defendant, Garcia, who had accused Ruben, received a life sentence. Justice needs to be served. Alex Hernandez is a nephew of Escolastica Harrison, who was brutally murdered in her Brownsville home back in 1998. Ruben Gutierrez was found guilty of her murder and has been on death row for the past 20 years. Uh, Gutierrez was set to be executed uh, last June of 2020. And at the last minute, uh, the Supreme Court stepped in and halted the execution because they wanted to hear his uh, point uh, that he was raising, that he said that he was entitled to have a spiritual advisor lay hands on him as the execution was being uh, carried out. Hernandez and his family are not on board with Gutierrez's latest appeal to have a pastor present during his execution. Sounds kind of crude, but I mean, did he ask my aunt if she wanted a pastor, you know, when he was putting a screwdriver in her neck. Today, Gutierrez filing a motion for DNA testing in his murder conviction. Hernandez says this is a way for him to buy time, but all he wants is closure. We can be at peace. We can be at rest. We don't have to worry about, you know, is this guy gone or not he you know it's done and like i said we can think of the remember everything good about my aunt the da says gutierrez has exhausted all state appeals and are moving to his federal appeals they hope to have an update later this year richard vasquez 44 years old 24 years on death row a jury found vasquez guilty of capital murder in june 1999 for the march 5 1998 death of miranda lopez a toddler Vasquez, who was 18 years old, shared a home with his parents, Brenda Lopez, his fiancée, their four-month-old daughter Megan, and Miranda, Brenda's four-year-old daughter. Vasquez had a significant heroin and cocaine addiction. Vasquez claims that he and Brenda argued all through the night of March 4th, during which he injected heroin and cocaine before passing out in the early hours of March 5th. At 10.30 a.m., Vasquez gave himself another heroin injection before driving Brenda to work between 11 a.m. and noon while the kids sat in the back seat. Vasquez became enraged with Brenda along the way since he had to keep an eye on the kids. After they got back home, Vasquez got upset because he could not find the drugs and he admitted that even if the four-year-old girl did nothing wrong, he hit her in the head. He instructed Miranda to go get a stool from his parents' room in order to wash her teeth. Vasquez asserted that Miranda fell to the ground when she returned with the stool. After brushing her teeth with toothpaste, he left the room. Miranda was lying face down in the sink when he returned. She continued falling down despite his repeated attempts to get her to stand. Around 1.30 p.m., he placed her on his parents' bed and dialed 911, informing the operator that Miranda was choking. Vasquez claimed Miranda bit him when he put his finger in her mouth to stop her from swallowing her tongue, and the little girl had blood on her nose and mouth. Miranda had a lump on the back of her head, obvious bruises on her back in different stages of healing, and bruising around her eyes which suggested a possible brain injury, according to the paramedics. The neurosurgeon testified that the little girl had brain injuries that were equivalent to those she would have sustained had she been ejected from a car traveling 65 miles per hour. When Miranda was checked by SA nurse Lean Box at 7 p.m., she was found to have significant bruising on her head, face, chest, hips, pelvis, genitalia, ankle, leg, shoulder, back, and arms. Some of these bruises were the results of wounds sustained in the previous 12 to 24 hours. Miranda's hips had bruises that were consistent with those that may result from being grabbed from behind while being essayed. The amount of cocaine in Miranda's bloodstream was possibly fatal, according to a blood analysis. It was two times the level at which an adult would die. Britt Ripkowski, 52 years old, 24 years on death row. On December 22, 1997, he strangled his girlfriend, Monica Allen, and left her on the side of the road. He then took her two-year-old baby girl, Dominic Frome, and drove to Houston, Texas. A few days later, on Christmas Day, Ripkowski murdered the little girl as well. 
he put her body in a suitcase which he left on the side of the road. After a week, he returned to the place he had dumped the body and buried the suitcase in a shallow grave. Currently, he does not have an execution date. As the court ruled, he suffered from bipolar disorder and he will not be executed unless his mental health improves enough. Luis Perez, 61 years old. 24 years on death row. Construction worker and carpenter Perez has been on death row since a Travis County jury convicted him for the 1998 murders of Michelle Fulweiler, 30 years old, Cinda Bars, 38 years old, and Bars' 9-year-old daughter, Stacy Mitchell. On September 8, 1998, Mitchell, Fulweiler, and Bars were discovered dead in their Barton Hills residence. Authorities claimed that Perez, a friend of Fulweiler, beat and strangled her after spending the night at her house. Then, after waiting until Mitchell got home from Barton Hill Elementary, he choked her. Perez killed Bars by beating her to death with an iron tortilla skillet after she got back from work. Anthony Haynes, 44 years old, 24 years on death row. According to court documents, the Harris County guy began driving around town with two companions in his father's pickup truck in May 1998 when he was just 19 years old and high on meth, holding up several passerby and stealing their wallets. Later on the evening, the group passed by a couple headed to a sports bar, Houston Police Sergeant Kent Kincaid and his wife. Kincaid recognized it was a bullet when something hit the couple's car and smashed the windshield. Kincaid pulled over while not wearing a uniform, approached Haynes and asked to see his license. The officer reached behind to get his police identification when Haynes opened fire, striking Kincaid in the head before running away. After that, when authorities discovered that his father owned the truck, they detained him. Therion Wardrip, 64 years old. 24 years on death row. A total of five women were essayed and murdered by Wardrip, a serial killer. In Wichita Falls, Texas, and the neighboring counties, four of the ladies died. Fort Worth, about a two-hour drive southeast of Wichita Falls, saw the murder of one woman. The killing spree carried out by Wardrip started at the end of 1984 and lasted until the middle of 1986. All of his female victims were white, aged between 20 to 25, under 5 and a half feet tall, and weighed less than 120 pounds. Juan Alvarez, 46 years old, 24 years on death row. On June 6, 1998, a group of people held a birthday celebration in front of an apartment building that was frequently used by members of the neighborhood street gangs. Gunshots were heard when a group of five cars approached the apartment building. Adrian and Michael Aguirre were both slain by bullets that also wounded several other people. The bullet casings that were discovered in the roadway had the appearance of having been shot from an assault rifle. Witness accounts confirmed Alvarez's status as one of the shooters. Juan Alvarez directed and took part in the shooting at Prestwood, according to testimony from Miguel Reyes, a member of the Southwest Cholos Gang. Charles Mamou Jr., 49 years old, 24 years on death row. Mary Carmouche, 17 years old, was in a group that met Mamou on December 6, 1998, near the Astrodome, was killed and Mamou was found guilty of her murder. According to the prosecution, Mamou and one of Carmouche's associates may have planned to steal from one another. Upon the arrival of Carmouche's group, Mamou started firing, hitting Terence Gibson, 22 years old, Kevin Walter, 24 years old, and Carmouche's date, Dion Holly, 21 years old. Gibson passed away. Walt and Holly made a full recovery. Following the shootings, Carmouche remained in the rear seat as Mamou got in the group's vehicle and drove off. After she was made to engage in a sexual act, she was shot and killed. Anibal Canales Jr., 59 years old, 23 years on death row. When Canales joined the Texas Mafia prison organization, he was already serving a 15-year sentence for aggravated essay, according to the prosecution. Authorities claim that the gang gave Canales and other gang members the order to kill Dickerson after they thought he had revealed they had attempted to smuggle tobacco inside the prison. Canales proceeded to Dickerson's cell with another gang member who strangled Dickerson while Canales held him down. 
Canales' lawyers have previously claimed that in order to get the gang's protection, he was compelled to comply with all of their demands. He was physically vulnerable as another jail group tried to kill him because of his previous heart attacks. Bernardo Tercero, 47 years old, 23 years on death row. An adult male was shot and killed inside the Park Avenue cleaners by Tercero and one of his co-defendants. Berger was shot when he entered the Houston dry cleaners to place a clothing order. While his wife remained in the car, he brought their young daughter inside with him. Both saw the shooting. Berger received a gunshot wound to the left side of his neck and slumped forward onto the ground. When he was killed, he had been teaching junior and senior English at Regan High School for a year. He was just 38 years old. Unknown sums of money were taken from the business. While his co-defendant fled to Mexico, Tercero continued to run, ending up in Florida. Travis Green, 55 years old, 22 years on death row. On September 2, 1999, Green broke into the residence of a white woman, 19 years old. He essayed her and then he killed her. The attacker was identified as Green by DNA evidence. In 2007, Houston police named 38-year-old Travis Green as a suspect in the 82-year-old Margaret McGuinness death and essay in her house in the 1800 block of Crocker Street. On July 13, 1988, McGuinness was discovered strangled and essayed on the floor of her bedroom, according to the police. The assailant barred the door from inside the home after entering via the bedroom window. The case went unsolved due to a lack of witnesses or leads. The investigation was revived in August 2006 by the HPD Homicide Division's Cold Investigation Squad, who also transferred samples from McGuinness' autopsy to a lab for testing. Police said that Green's DNA was detected in the post-mortem evidence. Jamal Howard, 43 years old, 22 years on death row. The night before the murder, Howard took a gun from his grandfather and hid it. His family tried to convince him to surrender the firearm, but he refused. The next morning, he got the gun and proceeded several blocks to the Chevron shop. He peered through the windows, went inside, entered the locked office space where the victim was seated, and shot the woman once in the chest. He reached over the dead person to steal a carton of smokes before stealing $114 from the register. Before being informed that it was recorded on camera, he denied committing the crime. He said that he was not sorry for perpetrating the crime to the officer who collected his statement. Kerry Allen, 64 years old, 22 years on death row. Kiana Lachey Baker, the two-year-old daughter of Allen's girlfriend, was essayed and murdered. Repeated hits to the child's chest and abdomen caused the death. Kim Jones, the mother of the little girl, who acknowledged previously hitting her daughter with a belt in the past, told police she had left for work that day and came home early when Alan called to indicate there was an emergency. The mother arrived to find the little girl dead on the floor. Near her body was a jar of Vaseline. When the ambulance arrived, Alan ran away but later surrendered. Robert Woodard, 43 years old, 22 years on death row. A Harris County jury found Robert Lee Woodard guilty of capital murder and gave him the death penalty. According to the evidence presented by the state, Woodard robbed the Houston convenience store in 1999 and shot and killed the owner, Tankachan Matai, and his wife, Achama Matia, who was a store employee during the course of the heist. He exited the store after getting lottery scratch-off tickets. Once outside, he stole a customer's car and left the area. The defense argued that Woodard's brother committed the killings and that Woodard had been misidentified by the witnesses. Rigoberto Avila Jr., 51 years old, 22 years on death row. In May 2001, Avila received a death sentence for the murder of Nicolas Macias, the 19-month-old son of his girlfriend. In February 2000, he contacted 911 to report that the child was not breathing while he was monitoring Nicholas and his girlfriend's other kid, who was four years old. According to court documents, the testimony of medical professionals supported the claims made at trial by El Paso County prosecutors that Avila stomped on Nicholas's stomach, causing the boy to suffer fatal blunt force injuries. According to the state and medics, only Avila could have killed Nicholas, 
notwithstanding the claims made by Avila's attorneys that the older child could have caused the injuries. Avila claimed in his initial testimony to police that he was in the other room when the older boy entered and informed him that he and Nicholas were wrestling and that he had put his hand over Nicholas's mouth when he stopped breathing. However, Avila claimed to have stepped on the child in a second statement to the police. Jedediah Murphy, 48 years old, 22 years on death row. On October 4, 2000, in Garland, Murphy held a 79-year-old Caucasian woman at gunpoint and forced her to give him a ride. Murphy pushed the victim into the car's trunk after roughly 30 minutes of riding. As the victim was climbing into the trunk, he shot her. The victim was then removed from the trunk and drowned in a creek in Van Zandt County after Murphy had driven the victim's vehicle there. Murphy later bought smokes and booze using the victim's credit cards. Obi Weathers, 42 years old, 22 years on death row. One night in February 2000, Weathers entered Pierce's Ice House, a bar in San Antonio, Texas, brandishing a handgun and hiding his face with a pillowcase with eye holes cut out. This was after a crime spree that included a string of burglaries, thefts, one murder, and one essay of an elderly man over the course of just a few months. Weathers announced his intention to loot the ice house to the customers, but he announced the three black males present to keep quiet because he only wanted to rob the white people. Weathers forced the waitress to empty the cash register after robbing the white customers. The waitress stumbled as she was handing Weathers the cash when he aimed his revolver in her direction. At this point, Ted Church swung at Weathers and grabbed him. Weathers shot Church three times in the head and once in the abdomen during the ensuing battle. Weathers stole more than $200 before fleeing, but he was caught 11 days later and admitted to this and other offenses as well. Church was shot in the pancreas and despite being taken to the hospital and undergoing several surgeries, he died a few weeks later. William Spear, 49 years old, 22 years on death row. Spear was already serving a life sentence for shooting the father of a friend in Houston when he and Anibal Canales Jr. strangled Gary Dickerson to death in his Tedford unit cell on July 11, 1997. The man's affiliation with the Texas Mafia, a prison organization, is said to be what led to Dickerson's murder. Ivan Cantu, 50 years old, 22 years on death row. He was convicted in 2001 for the Dallas murders of his cousin and his cousin's fiancé, James Mosqueda and Amy Kitchen. Prosecutors have argued Cantu's guilt largely by pointing to forensic evidence and the testimony of Amy Bocher, Cantu's fiancé. His fingerprints were found on the murder weapon and bloody clothes containing DNA from the victims were found in his trash can. He was scheduled for execution on April 26th, but the warrant was withdrawn as new evidence came to light suggesting he may have been wrongfully convicted and actually framed for the murder by his then-girlfriend. She passed away in 2021, and since then, evidence of her involvement came to light. Moreover, after her death, her brother started to call the prosecutors and lawyers to say that what he claimed at the trial was not true, that he was on drugs and his statements were all lies. Robert Will 45 years old, 21 years on death row. Will, who was attempting to break into a car in Houston on December 4, 2000, was being pursued by a white male police officer at the time. When the officer got close to Will and started to restrain him, Will shot the officer seven times in the head, killing him. Even though I didn't commit this murder, I was doing stupid stuff, hanging around idiot people, and I'm responsible for that. One of the neighbors called 911 saying that there's a theft. A patrol vehicle arrives at the scene a few minutes later. Deputy Michael Kelly was in that patrol vehicle and also Deputy Barrett Hill. When they arrive, Rob and Rosario, they both begin to run away. About uh, 20 seconds later, the dispatch tapes show that Deputy Hill had Rob arrested and in custody. I ran away, 
I mean, I saw someone get killed. Yeah, I'm running away. Yeah, I'm getting the hell out of here. was shot in the process of his left hand, right? At the time of trial, it was the state's theory that Rob had this firearm before the murder, somehow shot himself, handcuffed, and miraculously freed himself of these handcuffs. The problem with that theory is that no gunshot residue was ever found on Rob's right hand. No DNA evidence linking Rob to the crime. And there's been no eyewitness testimony discovered that links Rob well to this, the crime. Linda Carty, 65 years old, 21 years on death row. A 25-year-old woman's residence was broken into on May 16, 2001 by Carty and three other co-defendants. Two other victims were beaten, duct taped, and left inside the house while the victim and her three-day-old child were abducted. The 25-year-old woman was put in the trunk of a car after being hogtied with duct tape and having a bag taped over her head. The victim suffocated to death. Perry Austin, 64 years old, 21 years on death row. After admitting guilt to the murder of nine-year-old David Karim Kazmuz, Austin was given the death penalty. On August 19, 1992, David Kazmuz left his neighbor's yard and headed toward his house when he vanished. Austin had served almost a year of his parole after being found guilty of aggravated robbery, attempted essay, and essay in Dallas in 1978. In this case, family members were among the victims. He met Karim Kazmuz while working as a drug courier for a street gang in Houston. Austin believed Karim, who was 16 at the time, had stolen from him when some of the pills went missing. Austin killed Karim's younger brother in retaliation. Perry Williams, 43 years old, 21 years on death row. Williams was found guilty and given the death penalty for killing and robbing Matthew Carter in 2000. Carter was returning a video to Blockbuster and heading back to his car on September 17th at 11 p.m. According to court records, Williams walked up holding a gun, told Carter to sit in the passenger seat, and then he drove away. After stopping the vehicle, he shot Carter once in the head and stole $40 from his wallet. At gunpoint, Williams and three others took jewelry and wallets from three other people that evening. Irving Davis, 41 years old, 21 years on death row. In El Paso, Texas, on June 4, 2001, Davis followed Melissa Medina, then 16 years old, as she left the party. Davis led her into a playground of an elementary school where he killed her by strangling and striking her in the head with an unidentified weapon. Additionally, Davis essayed her. Alejandro Betancourt stated in his deposition that he worked for the Anthony Independent School District's maintenance division. He and a colleague found Medina's body on the school grounds early on June 4, 2001. The tips of her fingers were severed and her face was black and swollen. Ronald Pribble, 51 years old, 21 years on death row. Pribble was found guilty of the shooting deaths of Nilda Tirado, 24 years old, and Esteban Steve Herrera, 29 years old, Tirado's fiancé. According to testimony, Pribble shot Herrera, essayed Tirado, shot her, and then set her body on fire to destroy any DNA evidence. The smoke caused the deaths of three children, the couple's 22-month-old daughter Jade, Tirado's daughter, 7-year-old Rachel Elizabeth Campion, and Herrera's daughter, 7-year-old Valerie. Ronald Hamilton, 46 years old, 21 years on death row. On November 7, 2001, while committing a heist in Houston, Hamilton and one other defendant killed a store employee. Hamilton carried the firearm into a convenience shop. Ismail Matalka, 36 years old, was fatally shot by Hamilton, who then also shot another Iranian man, 38 years old, in the chest. The cash register was then taken by Hamilton, who then departed the shop. Robert Robertson, 57 years old, 20 years on death row. 
Robertson asserted that he found his injured two-year-old daughter Nikki on January 31, 2002, after she had fallen out of bed. For treatment, he brought her to Palestine Regional Medical Center. After that, she was brought to Children's Hospital in Dallas, where she passed away on February 1, 2002. Authorities detained Robert Robertson and charged him with capital murder in connection with his daughter's death. He was accused of violently shaking and abusing Nikki, causing severe injuries that ultimately led to her death. Pete Russell, 50 years old, 20 years on death row. He was found guilty of Tangela Brewer's murder. Brewer was a police informant in addition to being in a relationship with him. She brought D.K. Bush, an undercover drug police officer, to Russell's home on May 2, 2001 and introduced them. Bush was about to purchase several ounces of crack cocaine from Russell. The two met and carried out the deal in a store. Bush gave the order for Russell's arrest to additional policemen. Russell was given a 10-year sentence. He agreed to surrender on September 7th when the judge rescheduled the hearing. He killed Brewer on August 13th for setting him up. I think that my case will be overturned, maybe a full reversal, maybe just a punishment phase and that eventually I will go home. You know, I will have to do some time. You know, I'm not saying that I'm innocent. Let me go. You know, I'm saying that, hey, I did something, and I should be punished for it. But what I did doesn't warrant a death sentence because my case, legally speaking, for as Texas law, doesn't warrant a death sentence. It carries two to 20 years. My case is, is a crime of passion, a, uh, a manslaughter case. You know, so yes, I took somebody's life, and again, I should be punished for that according to the law. It's like somebody that's a drunk driver and they run over somebody. They don't send them to death row, you know, because it's, it's a manslaughter, you know, but they do, they do some time for it. You know, they get in trouble for it, and so that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying to excuse what I did, you know, but uh, I don't think that I would be executed. This is what I feel within my heart of hearts. Terrace Sales. 44 years old, 20 years on death row. Tyron Butler, 33 years old, who saw a gunfight at a Houston Mall parking lot in February 2000, was killed by command of sales, who ordered friends William Herschel Austin and Cheryl Kissentainer to kill Butler. In Houston, Texas, on July 21st, Butler was tragically shot when he was stopped at an intersection. After setting up surveillance on Butler, the prosecution claims that Austin fired the fatal shot. Randy Halprin, 46 years old, 20 years on death row. Halprin was part of the Texas Seven, a group of inmates who escaped from a South Texan prison in December 2000 and went on to commit a number of robberies, including the one in which they shot and killed Irving police officer Aubrey Hawkins, 29 years old, during the robbery of a sporting goods store. One of the seven prisoners who fled committed suicide before the group was apprehended. Halprin and another person, Patrick Murphy, are on death row while four others have already been put to death. Ray Freeney, 50 years old, 20 years on death row. Freeney brought his girlfriend to a motel on April 18, 2002 in Houston, Texas, where he essayed her and fatally stabbed her. A second female victim was attacked when she entered her home and she was stabbed and essayed till she passed out. After leaving that house, he picked up a third victim and brought her to his house, where he choked her until she also passed out. He essayed her and repeatedly stabbed her after she woke up, killing her. David Renteria, 54 years old, 20 years on death row. On November 18, 2001, Renteria kidnapped a five-year-old Hispanic girl from El Paso, Texas, choked her to death, and then burned her body. At around 5.15 p.m., a store video camera caught the victim leaving the building with an unidentified male. Her parents realized she was missing very soon, but she was nowhere to be found on the store premises. Her body was discovered on November 19, 2001, around 7.10 a.m., in the East Alley of 1220 North Oregon. At the scene of the crime and from the victim's person, tangible evidence and latent prints were gathered. An autopsy found that the cause of death was manual strangulation. Five-year-old Alexandra Flores walked into this Lower Valley Walmart to go Christmas shopping with her parents and siblings, and she disappeared. Baby, we miss you. We want you home, baby. 
Come home, maybe. Her parents made a desperate plea for her return on our 10 o'clock news that night. The chilling moment Alexandra went missing was caught on surveillance camera. A little girl in a red dress walked out of the store led by a man in a dark shirt and white cap. No way that somebody can go into a store and take a five-year-old child uh, under everybody's nose. 14 hours later, an early arriving employee found the nude, burned body of a lifeless little girl in the parking structure at a West Central doctor's office more than 15 miles away. Our first question for police was, is this body of Alejandra Flores, the five-year-old that disappeared or was abducted from a Walmart at America's in Alameda last night? Right now, the police are saying they don't know. But it was Alexandra Flores. The medical examiner determined she was strangled. The attempted burning came after her death. No evidence of assault was found. His name was David Santiago Renteria. He had turned 32 three days after Alexandra was kidnapped. About a decade earlier, Renteria had molested a little girl who was close to Alexandra's age. He lived down the street from the Walmart. Police had photos of Renteria, hand and fingerprints, even his shoe size. The prints matched. David Renteria was arrested and tried for capital murder. It only took him 129 seconds. 129 seconds for him to do the shopping he wanted to do on the second visit to Walmart. He goes in. And he walks out with that five-year-old. The emotional trial gripped the community, which came together to support a family that had to relive the most horrible time of their life. Those are the kind of cases that, uh, that really affect uh, any human being. Patrick Murphy, 62 years old, 20 years on death row. While attempting to flee the TDCJ Connolly unit on December 24, 2000 in Irving, Texas, Murphy and six co-defendants fatally shot a 31-year-old white male police officer. Murphy was part of the Texas 7, and we spoke about his other death row co-defendant earlier in the video. John Rubio, 43 years old, 20 years on death row. The three children of his common-law wife, Angela Camacho, Julissa Quesada, age 3, John Rubio, and Mary Jane, age 2, were beheaded on March 11, 2003, and Rubio was found guilty by a jury. Despite having fathered Mary Jane, John Allen Rubio treated all children as his own. Rubio acknowledged killing his kids and claimed he did so because he believed they were possessed by the spirit of his deceased grandma. He acknowledged to drowning, stabbing, and beheading Mary Jane Rubio, John Estefan Rubio, and Julissa Quesada. Rubio's brother phoned the police, who arrived at the family's apartment to find the youngsters dead. A large trash bag had been used to contain the two girls, and the little boy was on the bed. We couldn't understand why the Rubio did to those little kids, you know. It wasn't easy for Minerva Perez to share her account of the night of March 2003. Just steps from her home on Tyler Street in downtown Brownsville, three children were beheaded by their own mother, Angela Camacho, and her common-law husband, John Allen Rubio. The remains were found in plastic bags inside an apartment in this building, with Rubio and Camacho still inside the apartment, claiming they had been possessed by demonic spirits to kill the children. It's, it's, it's very hard because... Uh... There were a lot of people and people were screaming and, you know, that it couldn't happen at, at the Imperial. Alejandro Mendoza remembers he once saw Rubio pick up one of the children by the throat because he was crying. He says the night of the murders, police asked to go to his backyard where his dogs were, fearing a gruesome scene. He says they wanted to see what the dogs were eating because they thought Rubio and Camacho had possibly thrown out the kids' bodies to the dogs to get rid of evidence. It's these horrific memories that haunt neighbors here, and although abandoned, the building where the murders happened still stands and is a constant reminder of the tragedy. For these neighbors, there's only one solution. I think it's time to that thing to, so they can tear it down because there's a lot of people, they go in that building and they don't respect it. Uh, 
I think it's time to the, the mayor to do something. Marcus Drury, 44 years old, 20 years on death row. Drury was found guilty in 2003 for the Halloween 2002 kidnapping, robbery, and murder of 20-year-old Skylar Brown in rural Brazos County. Skylar was a former classmate of Drury's at Texas State Technical College. According to reports, Drury killed Brown by shooting him three times, burnt the body, and then dumped it in a stock pond. Drury stole the victim's money, phone, pager, and drug bag. Do you have an update on Brian Death Row inmate Marcus Drury? He will have another hearing to see if he's competent and fit to die for his crime. That ruling came down today from the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. Drury had an originally scheduled execution date of August 1st, 2012 for the Halloween 2002 shooting death of Skylar Brown. Drury's lawyers say he is schizophrenic and lacks a rational understanding that he's going to die. There's no timetable for that competency hearing to take place. He was declared mentally incompetent to be executed, but he remains on death row. Walter Sorto, 46 years old, 20 years on death row. In the East End area of Houston, Texas, two women and one teenage girl were murdered in 2002. Edgardo Rafael Cubas Matamoros, a citizen of Honduras, Walter Alexander Sorto, a citizen of El Salvador, and Eduardo Navarro, a kid who was just 15 years old at the time of the crimes, were the three perpetrators. Esmeralda Alvarado, 15 years old, was a sophomore in the 10th grade at Lamar High School. She vanished on January 18, 2002, after leaving the home of her boyfriend. The three criminals abducted her, essayed her, then shot her in the head. Her body was found on January 22, 2002. The other murder victims, waiters Roxana Araceli Capulin, 24 years old, and Maria Moreno Rangel, 38 years old, worked at the El Mirador restaurant in the East End, which Capulin's family purchased in 1994. The bodies of the two women were discovered in Capulin's car on July 1st after they vanished on May 31st, 2002. They had been shot to death and tape had been placed over their mouths and eyes. Tomas Cayo, 48 years old, 20 years on death row. The morning of December 11, 2001, Gallo was watching over his girlfriend's two girls. That afternoon, Destiny Flores, three years old, was discovered with more than 200 internal and external wounds, a 12-inch skull fracture, and signs of a brutal essay. During the trial, a medical examiner had testified that the child had been kicked, punched, and apparently bit several times. She sustained organ damage and rib fractures. William Irvin, 57 years old, 20 years on death row. On February 14, 1987, in Harris County, Texas, Irvin broke into the home of a white woman who was just 24 years old, essayed her, and fatally stabbed her. Nearly 14 years later, he was linked to the victim by DNA testing. Michelle Dennis Shadbolt grew up next door to William David Diggy Irwin. Irwin's parents had been Shadbolt's family friends. They had even brought them coffee and assisted them in removing the blood-stained carpet and furnishings from their daughter's house. Irwin had been playing with her kids since he was four years old, according to Shadbolt's mother. Guy Allen, 60 years old. 20 years on death row. An individual was given the death penalty by a Travis County jury for the April 2002 murders of his girlfriend and her daughter. On March 15th, Guy Allen was found guilty of the homicides of Barbara Hill and Jeanette Johnson. In her Austin home, Hill, 47 years old, received 46 stab wounds. After trying to intervene and call the police, her daughter, who was 19 years old, received 10 stab wounds, and she died as a result of those injuries. Damon Matthews, 39 years old, 19 years on death row. He was found guilty of the murder of his friend and the theft of his carefully kept 1992 Oldsmobile car. He was sentenced to death by the jury for the March 6, 2003 shooting death of 20-year-old Esfandiar Gonzalez on a street in the Elif neighborhood. 
Gonzalez and Matthews planned to meet that evening because Matthews claimed to have sound equipment Gonzalez could have been interested in purchasing for his car. Gonzalez was shot seven times in the head as the two were sitting in the car by Matthews, who then dumped Gonzalez's body nearby and fled in the car. A few hours later, Matthews was detained at a self-service car wash as he worked to clean the car's bloody inside. The murder weapon was also found in the car. Juan Reynosa 44 years old, 19 years on death row. He was found guilty of murdering 44-year-old Tonya Lynn Riedel during a robbery. A gunman approached Riedel and a man named George Jimenez as they were behind the gas station conversing when they were attacked, according to authorities. Reynosa is charged with holding a gun to Jimenez's head and yelling demands for cash and other goods. Jimenez was permitted to leave after complying with the shooter's instructions. The shooter then approached Riedel. He attempted to rob her and struck her, sending her to the ground. The shooter then stepped over her and fired one round at the victim. Riedel died at the scene, but Jimenez was unharmed. Edgardo Cubas, 44 years old. 19 years on death row. The essay and shooting killings of Roxana Capulin, 24 years old, Teresa Rangel, 38 years old, and 15-year-old Esmeralda Alvarado on the east side of Houston resulted in the arrest of these trio in February 2003. They were identified as Walter Alexander Sorto, Edgardo Rafael Cubas, and Eduardo Navarro. Sorto has now been found guilty of killing Capulin and Rangel, who were kidnapped on June 1, 2002, from the restaurant where they both worked. Laura Ayala, 13 years old, who has been missing since March 10, 2002, and was originally identified as an I-45 victim, has also been connected to Sorto, Cubas, and Navarro after DNA evidence connected her to a drop of blood found in Cubas's father SUV. They refused to talk about their role in the murder of Ayala and aren't facing any charges in this case. Anthony Francois 55 years old, 19 years on death row. Anthony Quinn Francois was given the death penalty by a Harris County jury for the murder of his ex-girlfriend's little sisters. The murders of Ashley Patterson, 11 years old, and Brittany Patterson, 10 years old, on September 11, 2003, led to Francois's conviction. He was also charged with murdering another sister, 15-year-old Nakisha Patterson, but was never tried for that. After finding out that his ex-girlfriend, who was just 16 at the time, was seeing a boy who was closer to her own age, Francois claimed authorities he shot the girls in a fit of jealous wrath. He also hurt her mother and her. Gerald Marshall, 41 years old. 19 years on death row. In the May 18, 2003 murder of 38-year-old Christopher Martin Dean, Marshall was found guilty of capital murder. While working the graveyard shift at a Whataburger restaurant, Dean was slain. Gregory O'Neill Love, the restaurant's then manager, was involved in the planning of the heist, according to police and prosecutors. In connection with Dean's passing, Love and two other men, Ronald Worthy and Kenneth Earl Callahan, were accused of capital murder. Dean had been a 13-year employee of the restaurant and was described by the police as having mild mental retardation. At around 4 in the morning, a gun-wielding marshal broke through the window and demanded the safe skis from the man who was at the drive through window. Marshall fired one round to his head. Juan Ramirez, 39 years old. 19 years on death row. Juan Navarro Ramirez and 10 other defendants broke into a home in Hidalgo County, Texas on January 5, 2003 in order to take a significant amount of Mary Jane. Six Hispanic men were killed by Navarro Ramirez and his co-defendants while they were stealing the drugs. Elijah Jubert, 44 years old. 18 years on death row. Jubert made an attempt to rob the Ace America check cashing business with two other individuals. He discovered Alfredia Jones had contacted the police and promptly shot her in the head. When responding to the call, Officer Charles Clark was shot in the shoulder. When one of the other cohorts shot Clark in the head at close range because the officer's gun jammed, Clark was killed. The defense contended that one of the other guys killed the shopkeeper and forced Jubert to take part in the crime. Jones returned to work from her maternity leave that exact day, while Clark was killed the day before his 20th anniversary with HPD. Andre Thomas, 40 years old, 18 years on death row. Thomas murdered Laura Boren, his estranged wife, 
his son, age 4, and her daughter, age 1, in Sherman, Texas in 2004. The two children's hearts were taken from their bodies after he hacked open the chests of all three victims. Thomas stabbed himself three times in the chest after killing the kids. He entered the living room and laid down next to Boren's body, expecting to pass away from his wounds. He put the victim's organs in his pockets after realizing he wasn't going to die and headed home. He put the organs in a bag and discarded them in the garbage when he got home. Thomas handed himself in to the Sherman Police Department where he told the authorities that he believed God had ordered him to murder the victims. He claimed that he used a different knife to kill each victim because he believed that the victims contained devils. He reasoned that if the blood from the victims was allowed to mix, the demons might live. Thomas underwent chest surgery after being transported to the hospital. Umberto Garza, 49 years old, 18 years on death row. Garza and 10 co-defendants entered two private residences and fatally shot six Hispanic males. We talked about this earlier in the video. His co-defendants were Rudy Medrano, Robert Cantu, George Martinez, Robert Garcia, Juan Raul Ramirez, Jeffrey Juarez, Marcial Bocanegra, Juan Cordova, Salvador Solis, and Raimundo Sauceda. Moises Mendoza, 39 years old, 18 years on death row. Rachel Tolson was abducted, essayed, and then strangled to death by Mendoza. He then set the body on fire. One of the first people on the site, an FBI evidence technician, observed that thick foliage had been placed on top of Tolson's body in an effort to conceal it. Her body had suffered severe burns and was starting to rot. Around her head and neck, fly eggs and maggot activity suggested that she had been there for at least two days. Where her flesh had ruptured, her skin was burned yellow in some spots and charred black in the others. Her hair had mostly been burned off. Her upper chest was covered in charred clothing remains, but she was naked below her waist. Two tarp grommets were positioned over the back of Tolson's left leg and head, and an orange rope was fastened around her right ankle. Tolson's body was recovered on a pet, and burned bits of tarp and skin were discovered there, proving that she had been dragged or transported there. Rodolfo Medrano, 44 years old, 18 years on death row. In Hidalgo County, Texas, on January 5, 2003, Medrano and ten co-defendants entered a private home where six Hispanic men were shot and killed when the suspects demanded drugs, cash, and firearms. Edward Busby Jr., 51 years old, 18 years on death row. Edward Lee Busby Jr. was given a death sentence for the murder of a retired college professor. After less than three hours of deliberation, the Tarrant County jury returned with a decision. Laura Lee Crane, 77 years old, was killed in 2004 after being kidnapped from the parking lot of a store in southwest Fort Worth where she had gone shopping. The former Texas Christian University professor was duct taped, but Busby, who was found guilty of capital murder, said he had no intention of killing her. When she was discovered, Mrs. Crane was covered in 37 feet of duct tape. The Texas Court of Criminal Appeals is delaying the execution of Edward Lee Busby to review claims he is intellectually disabled and ineligible for the death penalty. Busby was convicted of killing retired 77-year-old TCU professor Laura Lee Crane in 2004. The state's first execution of 2021 is now set to be Ramiro Ibarra, March 4th. Harper Garland, 54 years old, 13 years on death row. Harper was given a death sentence after a jury deliberated for three hours before convicting him of fatally stabbing and strangling his 38-year-old girlfriend and her two daughters. For several months, Harper, who was then 40 years old, and Triska LaShawn Rose shared a condo in southwest Houston. Harper started stalking Triska and accusing her of cheating on him. In the end, on October 24, 2008, 
He tied her up, stabbed her, and then slashed her throat. He was detained for aggravated robbery in 1998 when the two were dating. After serving nine years of a 40-year prison term, he was freed. After his release, the two were together for seven months before her death. Brianna Robertson, 15 years old, and Maya Love, who was just 7 years old, were also strangled after being bound by Harper. Harper was not their biological father. Melam Blaine, 34 years old, 13 years on death row. When Melam was sentenced to 180 days in prison in 2008, he was just 19 years old. Melam had broken into a girl's home and searched through her possessions. He received a six-month prison sentence after being charged with soliciting a child. Milam left the program 48 days into his sentence while on work release. He met Amora Carson's mother, Jessica Carson. They clicked right away and stayed together all the time. Milam thought Amora needed an exorcism a few weeks into the relationship because he believed she was possessed. Jessica was persuaded by him that Amora was evil. Amora was attacked by Jessica and Blaine. They used the claw hammer, resulting in shocking injuries, according to forensic pathologists. This exorcism ended with Amora's demise. Beginning at her head and ending at her toes, the infant's body bore 24 bite marks. Amora's brain was lacerated and her private parts were terribly torn. Amora sustained all of the wounds mentioned above while she was still alive. Pewson John, 40 years old, 13 years on death row. In 2010, Pewson was found guilty and given the death penalty for killing Rachel Joyner and her brother Travis. Prior to Rachel's murder, Pewson and Rachel were dating. On March 6, 2009, at 12.44 p.m., John Pewson dialed 911. Along with shooting 21-year-old Rachel Joyner, he also killed her older brother Travis. Indecisive about what he would do, Pewson had broken into the residence after midnight to see his ex-girlfriend. He was 25 years old and a former marine reservist. He repented almost right away. He repeatedly asked about the victims after he was apprehended and tried to justify his continued shooting of Rachel and her brother by saying, I felt like I was in like a mold, like training or a game or something. Lander Mobry III, 43 years old, 13 years on death row. When Lander was stopped for a traffic violation, he fled. He fired a shot during the pursuit, striking officer Timothy Abernethy, who collapsed to the ground. The fallen officer was shot twice in the head by Lander after he approached him. In addition to driving without a license and having a gun, Lander was on parole. Gobert Milton, 51 years old, 13 years on death row. In the stab and slashing death of Mel Cotton, 37 years old, the jury found Gobert guilty of capital murder. Because Cotton helped his ex-girlfriend in leaving his residence, Gobert killed her. Gobert claimed that some of his belongings were stolen during the relocation in a voicemail to his ex-girlfriend that was presented in court. Cotton was found by her sister in October 2003, stabbed and cut 107 times. Her five-year-old son was also stabbed, but he survived. Fabian Hernandez, 48 years old, 13 years on death row. Before finding that Hernandez should be executed for the murders of René Urbina Hernandez, 28 years old, and Arthur Lee Fonseca, 24 years old, the jury deliberated for 17 hours over three days. Outside of the West Side residence of René Hernandez's parents, he shot both victims once in the head. Hernandez killed them in cold blood because he was envious that his ex-wife had exhibited a love interest in Fonseca. The two young sons of Fabian and René Hernández were sleeping inside the house when the shooting took place. Hernández was also found guilty of voluntary manslaughter in the death of Hector Villagran in 1994. At point-blank range, Hernández shot Villagran, who was 17 years old, in the throat. Hernández, who was 18 years old at the time, was imprisoned for four years. Demontrell Miller, 36 years old, 14 years on death row. Miller was found guilty in 2009 of killing his girlfriend's two-year-old son. He killed the kid by beating him. Kellen Pinson, two years old, was murdered. The autopsy revealed that Pinson died from blunt force trauma, contrary to Miller's claims that he discovered the child in the water and tried to revive him. Later, the police discovered bloodied clothing inside the residence. 
The death, according to the defense, was an accident. Paul DeVoe, 60 years old, 14 years on death row. In Travis County, DeVoe was facing capital murder charges in connection with the killings of Haley Faulkner, 15 years old, an ex-girlfriend's daughter, and Daniel Hensley, 17 years old, in the Johnston massacre. On August 24, 2007, DeVoe fatally shot bartender Michael Alfred, 41 years old, at O'Neill's Sports Tavern in Marble Falls. He then took a car to his ex-girlfriend Paula Marie Griffith's 46 years old Johnston residence. He murdered Griffith, Hensley, Faulkner, 48-year-old Jay Feltner, who was her boyfriend. DeVoe allegedly drove to his hometown of Long Island, New York, where he was apprehended on August 27 at the home of a former co-worker. According to a criminal complaint, DeVoe had car trouble on the way and killed Betty Jane DeHart, 81 years old, after sighting her car at DeHart's home in Greencastle, Pennsylvania. James Broadnax, 35 years old, 14 years on death row. James Garfield Broadnax was found guilty of capital murder in August 2009. He was just 20 years old when this happened. Stephen Swan, 26 years old, and Matthew Butler, 28 years old, both Christian music producers, were killed by Broadnax. After learning that he had been given the death penalty by a jury, murderer James Broadnax grinned as the mother of one of the victims described how he had ruined her life. Friends and family of the victims grimaced, embraced, and wiped away tears as the punishment was read out. Over two days, the jury deliberated for nearly eight hours to come to this conclusion. Armando Leza, 47 years old, 14 years on death row. Leza was convicted of stabbing Carol Jean Allen, 57 years old, in 2007 after she refused to give him money for a $1,000 a day drug habit. His girlfriend was also charged in the attack. She testified against him in a plea deal. Raul Cortez, 42 years old, 14 years on death row. For four murders, Cortez received a death sentence from the state of Texas. According to court records, Eddie Williams, Javier Cortez, and Raul Cortez broke into Rosa Barbosa's home and demanded the keys and alarm codes for her check cashing business. Rosa Barbosa was slain by one of the men's gunshots. Mark Barbosa, 25 years old, together with companions Austin York, 18 years old, and Matt Self, 17 years old, entered the house as the men were preparing to leave. The three males were shot after being dragged into a bedroom. They were all killed by their wounds. Le James Norman, 38 years old, 15 years on death row. Kershan Remy, 38 years old. 16 years on death row. For a triple homicide, the state of Texas gave Norman the death penalty. According to court records, Samuel Roberts, 24 years old, Tiffany Peacock, 18 years old, and Celso Lopez, 38 years old, were shot and killed by the James Norman and Kershawn Ramey. Both Norman and Ramey received death sentences. Lopez was shot first, according to the testimony presenting during both trials. A close-range bullet grazed his cheek. When Peacock and Roberts came home and saw two armed masked men inside, Peacock recognized Norman. They went to Edna High School together. Norman's low, rumbling voice and lean, more than six-foot-tall frame was easy to recognize and couldn't be hidden behind the mask. Norman held the gun to Peacock's head and shot her. In the kitchen, Norman and Roberts got into a fight. On the directive of Norman, Remy shot Roberts twice. Then Norman fired at Roberts as well. He once missed. Finally, Norman shot Roberts again while pressing the rifle on the back of his skull. Paul Story, 39 years old, 15 years on death row, for killing Jonas Cherry, a 28-year-old assistant manager at a miniature golf business close to Fort Worth, in 2006 during a heist, Story received the death penalty. According to court documents, Cherry was shot by Story and another man while he was on his knees pleading for his life. Melissa Lucio, 55 years old, 15 years on death row. Lucio is the first woman of Hispanic heritage to receive a death sentence in Texas. After the death of her two-year-old daughter, Mariah, who had injuries to her skull, contusions of the kidneys, lungs, and spinal cord, as well as scattered bruises that were in various stages of healing, she was found guilty of capital murder. 
While Lucio's defense contended that Moriah's death was brought on by a fall down the stairs two days earlier, prosecutors argued that Moriah's injuries were caused by physical abuse. Randall Mays, 64 years old, 15 years on death row. Mays was found guilty of the Henderson County Sheriff deputies Tony Ogburn and Paul Habold's murders in May 2007, which occurred on his home after a neighbor contacted the police to report a disturbance. Previously scheduled for execution on March 18, 2015, he was spared after the court agreed with Mays' attorneys that he needed mental health evaluations to evaluate his competency for death. He had previously been committed to a state mental hospital and the pretrial diagnosis of an organic brain illness has been made. Additionally, Mays was scheduled to be executed on October 16, 2019, but that date was postponed also after a trial court judge agreed to withdraw it so that he would have time to properly review all medical records submitted. Dexter Johnson, 35 years old, 16 years on death row. He received a death sentence for a carjacking in 2006 that claimed the lives of 17-year-old Hyun Go and 23-year-old Maria Aparece. The young couple was chatting outside Ngo's house when Johnson and his four accomplices saw them seated in Aparece's Toyota. According to trial testimony, Johnson and two other people threatened them with a pistol and a shotgun. The attackers then stole Aparece's cash and credit cards and used her car to drive the two around Houston while attempting to withdraw money from her bank accounts. Two further conspirators followed in their own vehicle behind them. The crew eventually stopped and Johnson essayed Aparece in the back seat. The other assailants made fun of her boyfriend as he was compelled to watch it all while he was on his knees. Johnson shot Ngo in the head before killing Aparece. At trial, Johnson's defense team argued that it was someone else who walked the couple into the woods and fired the fatal shot. Joseph Gamboa, 41 years old, 16 years on death row. Gamboa was convicted in the fatal shooting of a 72-year-old man and a 54-year-old man while burglarizing a business. Christopher Jackson, 39 years old, 16 years on death row. Jackson was convicted in the fatal shooting of a man whose vehicle he had just stolen. Richard Tabler, 45 years old, 16 years on death row. Tabler was convicted in the shooting deaths of two men. Dylan Carter, 45 years old, 17 years on death row. Carter was convicted in the murder of an 89-year-old man during a robbery. Stephen Long, 52 years old, 17 years on death row. Long was convicted in the essay and strangulation of an 11-year-old girl. Ramiro Gonzalez, 41 years old, 17 years on death row. Gonzalez was convicted in the shooting death of an 18-year-old woman during the course of committing or attempting to commit aggravated essay, kidnapping, and robbery. Joe Luna, 44 years old, 17 years on death row. Luna was convicted in the choking death of a 21-year-old man while burglarizing his home. James Calvert, 50 years old, 8 years on death row. Calvert was convicted in the murder of his ex-wife. After the murder, he kidnapped his 4-year-old son and fled the state. Paul Hall, 30 years old, 8 years on death row. Hall was convicted in the murder of a 68-year-old man in his garage. The man's wife was also stabbed but survived her injuries. Eric Williams, 56 years old, 9 years on death row. Williams was convicted in the murder of Cynthia McClelland, the Kaufman County DA's wife, during a burglary. He was also charged but not tried in the murders of District Attorney Mike McClelland and Prosecutor Mark Hess. Stephen Thomas, 65 years old, 9 years on death row. Thomas was convicted in the murder of a 73-year-old woman in her home. Brian Suniga, 44 years old, 9 years on death row. Suniga was convicted in the shooting death of a 26-year-old man during a robbery at a restaurant. Harlem Lewis III, 32 years old, 9 years on death row. Lewis was convicted in the shooting deaths of a police officer and a local store owner. Fidencio Valdez, 44 years old. 9 years on death row. Valdez was convicted in the shooting death of a man during a drug deal. Cedric Ricks, 49 years old, 9 years on death row. Ricks was convicted in the stabbing death of his girlfriend and her 8-year-old son. 
Jeffrey Prevost, 64 years old, nine years on death row. Prevost was convicted in the murders of a woman and her 20-year-old son. Juan Balderas, 37 years old, nine years on death row. Balderas was convicted in a gang-related shooting. George Curry, 57 years old, nine years on death row. Curry was convicted in the shooting death of a Popeye's restaurant employee during a robbery. James Harris Jr., 64 years old, 10 years on death row. Harris was convicted in the stabbing death of a man during a home invasion. Matthew Johnson, 48 years old, 10 years on death row. Johnson was convicted in the murder of a gas station employee during a robbery. Franklin Davis, 41 years old, 10 years on death row. Davis was convicted in the murder of a 16-year-old girl who had accused him of S.A. Obel Cruz Garcia, 56 years old, 10 years on death row. Cruz Garcia was convicted in the murder of a 7-year-old. Naim Muhammad, 44 years old, 10 years on death row. Muhammad was convicted in the drownings of his two children. Willie Jenkins, 70 years old, 10 years on death row. Jenkins was convicted of essaying and murdering a 20-year-old woman in her home. Micah Brown, 44 years old, 10 years on death row. Brown was convicted in the shooting death of his ex-wife while she was in her car with their two children. Bartholomew Granger, 53 years old, 10 years on death row. Granger was convicted in the shooting death of a bystander while he was retaliating against and intending to kill his daughter's mother for serving as a witness in an SA case against him. Ricky Cummings, 34 years old, 11 years on death row. Cummings and co-defendant Albert Love Jr. were convicted in the murders of two men sitting in a vehicle. Stephen Nelson, 36 years old, 11 years on death row. Nelson was convicted in the murder of a pastor during a church robbery. Tyron Cade, 51 years old, 11 years on death row. Cade was convicted in the stabbing deaths of his girlfriend and her daughter. Roderick Harris, 39 years old, 11 years on death row. Harris was convicted in the shooting death of a man during a robbery. Kimberly Cargill, 57 years old, 11 years on death row. Cargill was convicted in the murder of a woman who was set to testify against her in a child protective case. Kwame Rockwell, 48 years old, 11 years on death row. Rockwell and two other men were convicted in the shooting deaths of two men during a convenience store robbery. Jamie Cole, 53 years old, 12 years on death row. Cole was convicted in the shooting deaths of his wife and 15-year-old stepdaughter. Tederick Batiste, 36 years old, 12 years on death row. He was convicted in the shooting death of a man during a carjacking. Joseph Jean, 51 years old, 12 years on death row. He was convicted in the murders of two girls ages 16 and 17. Areli Escobar, 44 years old, 12 years on death row. Escobar was convicted in the essay and stabbing death of a 17-year-old girl. Travis Mullis, 37 years old, 12 years on death row. Mullis was convicted in the murder of his three-month-old son. Courtney Robinson, 33 years old, 12 years on death row. Robinson was convicted in the shooting death of an 82-year-old man during a robbery. Mark Gonzalez, 48 years old, 7 years on death row. Gonzalez was convicted in the shooting death of Bexar County Sheriff Sergeant Kenneth Van. Van was shot more than 25 times with an AR-15. Demond Blanson, 54 years old, 7 years on death row. Blanson was convicted in the shooting deaths of his 21-month-old son and his girlfriend's 6-year-old boy. Amos Wells III, 33 years old, 7 years on death row. Wells was convicted in the shooting deaths of his 22-year-old pregnant girlfriend, her 10-year-old brother, and her mother in Fort Worth. John Falk, 57 years old, 6 years on death row. Falk was convicted in the death of a correctional officer during an attempted prison escape. Susan Canfield was struck by a vehicle stolen by Falk's co-defendant while trying to stop the escape. Billy Tracy, 46 years old, 6 years on death row. 
Tracy was convicted in the fatal beating of prison guard Timothy Davison at the Barry Telford unit. William Hudson, 41 years old, six years on death row. Hudson was convicted in the murders of six people on a camping trip. The victims' ages ranged from 6 to 76. Jason de la Cerda, 46 years old, five years on death row. De la Cerda was convicted in the murder of his girlfriend's four-year-old daughter. Isidro de la Cruz, 33 years old, five years on death row. He was convicted in the death of his ex-girlfriend's five-year-old daughter, whose throat was cut during a home invasion. Ali Irsan, 66 years old, five years on death row. Irsan was convicted in the honor killings of his son-in-law and daughter's best friend. The state said the deaths were part of a plot to kill five people, including his daughter, after she left home, converted to Christianity, and married a Christian man. Dillian Compton, 29 years old, five years on death row. Compton was convicted in the beating death of a prison guard, Marianne Johnson, at the Nebulan prison. Howard Lewis, 56 years old, five years on death row. Lewis was convicted in the hanging death of his 16-month-old son. The child was found at the house of his grandmother, who was also killed. Christopher Love, 39 years old, five years on death row. Love was convicted as the hired gunman in the death of a Dallas dentist. Gary Green, 60 years old, four years on death row. Green was convicted in the shooting death of an uptown county sheriff's deputy after authorities approached him at a gas station. Ronald Haskell, 43 years old, four years on death row. Haskell was convicted in the shooting deaths of his ex-sister and brother-in-law in spring. He also admitted to fatally shooting four of the couple's children, ages 4 to 13 years old. Hector Acosta, 34 years old, four years on death row. Acosta was convicted in the slayings and mutilation of two people, one of whom was beheaded. Damion Mosley, 42 years old, four years on death row. Mosley was convicted in the shooting death of a gas station clerk in Tyler during an armed robbery. Gustavo Sandoval, 40 years old, four years on death row. Tijerina Sandoval and the co-defendant were convicted in the shooting death of an off-duty U.S. Border Patrol agent. Brandon McCall, 32 years old, three years on death row. McCall was convicted in the shooting death of a Richardson police officer responding to a shooting at the apartment where McCall was staying. Lucky Ward, 59 years old, three years on death row. He was convicted in two separate fatal stranglings of women in Houston. Otis McCain, 38 years old, two years on death row. McCain was convicted in the shooting death of San Antonio police detective Benjamin Marconi after approaching the detective's parked patrol vehicle. William Davis, 39 years old, two years on death row. Davis was convicted in the deaths of four people at a Tyler hospital. He was found guilty of injecting air into patients' arterial systems while he was a nurse. Tyrone Williams, 37 years old, two years on death row. Williams was convicted in the fatal stabbings of two women after breaking into their home. Robert Solis, 51 years old, one year on death row. Solis was convicted in the shooting death of Harris County's first six sheriff's deputy, Sandeep Daliwal, during a traffic stop. Taylor Parker, 31 years old, one year on death row. Parker was convicted in the death of Reagan Simmons Hancock after cutting out her unborn baby, who also died. Robert Satterfield, 42 years old, six months on death row. Satterfield was convicted in the shooting death of four-year-old Ray Hudson Jr. He was also charged with killing the boy's parents, Maya Rivera and Ray Hudson Sr. Please hit that subscribe button if you like my channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.